Hello everyone, and welcome back to Star, Star Trek Cerberus Station, where this is going to be our season finale. Um, so I will be taking an episode break, so um, just a heads up, we will not be here on October the 4th. Instead, we will be resuming on Friday, October the 18th. If I have my schedules right, and I should, I have hopefully have enough practice at this. Other than that, I have no other announcements. So, Commander, I believe you have the station log. I do. First officer's log start date 82648.0. I've been running the station the last few days as the captain is now on his way back from being away on a diplomatic mission with Paul, our diplomatic corps representative, and the station is finally back to business as usual. Repairs to the station have been com completed. Our new Midas array is now fully operational, and now and now the work has begun to upgrade our station systems to be more protected from threats coming through the gate, such as our Tholian friends. We have even had a few more civilians arrive uh, in the last few Starfleet supply runs. It's great to see the old neb Nebula classes being used for something. Starfleet Intelligence has taken repair and vanished after destroying the Tholian gate. I am assuming they're uh, they have returned to the Alpha Quadrant. The gate has been called s calm since that move. And since our next move is to bring the media and give the remote Starbane initiative a uh, more positive appeal to the Federation citizens, Admiral Riker has arranged a tour of musicians and celebrities and celebrity Elena Proxima to her. On a personal note, it would be great to see Elena again after so long. I wonder if she will remember me from so long ago on Starbase 24. Although it was, I was just one of many there trying to help her uh, keep her safe from that attack. End log. All right. All right. So as as has been stated, uh, the captain is currently uh, returning from a diplomatic mission to the Vitaris Imperium. They are about to rechristen one of their home worlds as uh, finally re repatriated into the Vitars Imperium proper and has asked the Federation to send a diplomatic representative as a mission of goodwill. Naturally, the captain has gone and should hopefully be back um, before the episodes end. Um, however, we are going... To, uh, we have some time, so we are going to see what individuals are doing on the station. So we'll start with uh, Lieutenant Commander Keevan. Do you have anything that you'd like to be doing? At the moment, what I'm going to still be doing is, besides making sure that the station is deciding to keep itself together this time, especially since I've only been there a few short weeks, I'm going to be taking a look at the AI core, because it fascinates me that I haven't seen anything like this in several centuries, or, <laughs> so, sorry, several <laughs> decades, nearly a century, and it's... Intriguing to me. God, I got older than I thought. Ha. Okay, so the AI core is still under construction since it was last uh, destroyed by Miss a Breen, who allegedly would be Michael Jensen. Never proven. But he is no longer here. Um, it is still water-cooled, which is making construction a little difficult. But Meilun is the... Uh, AI specialist and is overseeing the reconstruction. Uh, so let me just find your character here. We'll plop you in. Uh, so to enter it, of course, you'd have to be in full uh, EVA um, scuba style as you are there. And Mei Loon uh, sw swims around the number of technicians who are struggling to uh, function properly underwater. Uh, tech diving is not a required course at the academy. And several of Larsay's uh, engineers have been forced to learn on the fly, let's say. <clears throat> so Meilun will swim around excitedly. Lieutenant Commander, welcome, welcome. Thank you. I, have, I haven't had a chance to come down here yet, especially since the aftermath of you know being here right after the Tholian attack. How goes the repairs on the AI unit? Uh, he does a sort of a comical head side to side motion, and then he whistles and chirps, uh, which translates into 
swimmingly. And then his mouth opens and his head bobs as if to mimic human laughter. You spend quite a bit of time with humans, haven't you? They do have that weird, peculiar sense of humor. Can't help it. I have to adapt to whichever environment I'm in. Humans are still the prime species within Starfleet, and so I've had to adapt several several times. Tell me, how, how have you found adapting to life on uh, this station? Honestly, not too bad. I find it a little easier than actually being aboard a starship, because, quite frankly, you start getting into a rhythm and a schedule, and it kind of feels a little good to actually be under, you know, do A, then B, then C, and have a constant place to go instead of this, that, and the other always happen. There's a, a subtle head bob. This is true. Mayloon doesn't get out much. Haven't haven't even been on one of the uh, scout vessels yet in a very long time. Would like to do that again. Have to talk to Captain. Or perhaps Lieutenant Commander Keevan could talk to Captain. Definitely could be a plan. Definitely. Yeah, I haven't been out there yet myself considering all the repairs that needed to be done as soon as everything happened. So I'm kind of curious to go through the trans warp. I've heard about it and I've studied it, but I have not really seen it firsthand. Uh, um, Meiluna twitches suddenly as a slight tingle w rushes over your EVA suit and it registers a small blinking hazard light. Uh, Meiluna quickly sorts himself out and quickly rams one of the uh, technicians and squeals at him about n improper grounding of an electrical cable. The technician shrugs, nods in forgiveness, and attempts to rebalance himself as he's been knocked uh, hither and thither underwater. I can see what you mean about needing to have things trained up a little better here with people. Yes, yes. Un Meiloon is, uh, Meiloon's adapting to Starfleet, but Starfleet needs to adapt to Meiloon. Very, very few aquatic species on station. Far too little, to be honest, because you know what? There's nothing wrong with a little aquatic life. Maybe I might talk to the commander and see if there might be something about either training up the engineering corps here a little bit better about maintenance. Yes, absolutely. Agreed. Totally wholeheartedly. Well, mainly I won't... Mayloon, I won't take any more of your time, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to continue to take a look at the rest of the few little bits, you know. Every, everything always needs a little tweaking here or there. Of course. Please don't, gr please don't touch any ungrounded wires. If you find ungrounded wires, please ground them. I look at Mayloon and I just give my over-exaggerated smile like only Denobulans can. And Meiloon seems quite happy with that. And um, we are going to go to uh, Commander Area. Why, hello. Hello, hello. So, I have a scene planned for you in sickbay if you're interested. Mm, certainly. Cool. Uh, technically the infirmary. Okay, so we are in the infirmary. Uh, Galen is long gone. And Area is here. <laughs> Okay, Aria, you are in sick bay, and there is a sick trance beat playing in the background. I know you gave me a link, so I will just paste that in chat if anyone is interested. As soon as they can play it in the background. I gotcha. Cool. Okay. <clears throat> so in walks a the Romulan, known as... Uh, Cujo. I have them here. Characters. Ambassadors. Cujo. Now, Cujo is sporting a massive... Um, well, he's sporting his uh, arm, which is broken. Uh, you can determine that easily based on how he's carrying it. And also, there's a bit of um, blood that has been splattered along the side of his face. Uh, he what is... color blood? 
dark red, most likely because Lahorst, the one of the Klingon bodyguards, is wandering in after him, and she is sporting a pretty decent scar down the uh, side of, or down her side, I should say. And she is basically laughing, and Kujo's looks up to Area and just says, "Doctor, we were sparring again, and well, she did this this time." And this is not the first time that these two have been in with various injuries. Mostly uh, cracked ribs, a torn femur. Uh, their sparring lessons have been um, somewhat like legendary uh, nowadays. I see. Yes. Well, uh, I tell the computer to uh, transfer the trance music to uh, my office, and I say... Uh, if you two could follow me to my office, I would be happy to uh, begin treating you. Absolutely. And Cujo follows you without uh, without is, hesitation. Which one of these is my office? Um, I would, be, if I had to guess, I would say it would be this one right there. Okay. Yeah, because I think this big one to the immediate right is the counselor's office. That would be yeah, or possibly labs, diagnostic areas, etc. Yeah. So they will head over here. Le Cujo is trying his best to maintain a straight face, but it's not helped that Lahorst is occasion is sort of poking him and deriving a little bit of mirth from his winces of agony. All right. Hmm. Well, once we're behind uh, closed doors, I uh, do go behind my desk, pull out the dermal regenerator. Uh, I forget the tool offhand that sets bones and fixes them, but yeah, uh, I grab that too. Start working. And uh, I basically start saying, so I say this uh, in confidence. And of course, remember, doctor patient confidentiality, but maybe you two should consider, you know, not going as hard in the lovemaking, just just a little bit. Um, if Romulans could look embarrassed, and I'm not entirely sure that they're physically able to, uh, Cujo would blush a slightly and Lil Horst just barks a laughter and says how commander you're our, you are obviously of a sparring warrior species you require your mates to be tough correct indeed there's a rather involved ritual that lasts uh approximately five days both day and night to prove that one is worthy to marry another just consider this part of the proving ritual at least it's only a broken arm this time. Yeah, last time it was a ruptured artery, and he nearly bled to death on the sheets. Ha! <sighs> you know how hard it is finding good mates this far out? I didn't even think of this Romulan for the longest time. Yes, and I'm sure he greatly appreciates that, and I wink at him. He nods and says, What can I say? I like a woman of passion, and then Romulan women are... Traditionally a bit subdued, for my liking. Well, the reason I pulled you into my office was because I did not want to embarrass you in front of the others, but uh, I say this again in uh, confidence. I think the others are starting to catch on, so you might want to be a little bit more discreet. I would be happy to give you a dermal regenerator on loan, not permanently, but on loan, if uh, it would mean you weren't in here pretty much every other week. The two look at one another, and yeah, um, the Romulan says, "I find your terms acceptable, Commander, or Doctor." Very well. Oh, and uh, Cujo, I hand him a pad. You're gonna start taking these, and uh, basically they are. Uh, well, on the pad is protein supplements. Uh, basically, things that either build up muscle or build up uh, bone strength. Uh, Mostly to try and, you know, help yeah. him along, not get completely owned. I see. Thank you, uh, Doctor. And high-gravity training. That would work. Mm, yes. yes. I, I find this to be a very enlightening experience. And he looks over his shoulder at uh, Lohost, who's just sort of leaning against the door, making a get-on-with-it motion. And... Thank you for your time, Doctor. 
of course. And uh, yeah, as they say, stay safe. Of course. And as they leave, and Lahorst is says, "Wow, it only took us five visits to get one of those. Now we can really try some interesting things." Kudo's like, "No, no, no. Let's do a little more of what we're currently working on. Then we'll get there." <sighs> Lieutenant Aisha just sort of sticks her head in after they leave and just goes, those two again, huh? Yep, they think they're hiding it. It's cute. Who'd have thought? Romulans and Klingons. Had I to happen. Give anyone the opportunity. Yeah. Well, closed space station. Not a very good scenery outside, so you have to look at the people inside. Was there uh, anything you wanted to bring to my attention, Lieutenant? Hmm. Nothing, Doctor. Uh, just the nurse rotation for the next few days. Excellent. I actually had something for you then. Oh. Uh, I was reading some very old reports from uh, human history, uh, specifically old medical doctors, and one particular entry by a Mr. Marlowe uh, intrigued me. Uh, he spoke of a time when he had to power the entire sickbay uh, via manual labor. Uh, he lists what is called a bicycle. Uh, I don't exactly know what that entails, but maybe that's something we should look into, a, uh, a manual way to keep sickbay running should uh, power be cut. I mean, I will be happy to float the idea to uh, Lieutenant Larce, if, see if we can find a way of... Uh bicycling our way to power it doesn't have to be whatever the hell a bicycle is it just has to be something that you know we aren't wholly dependent on backup generators because you know back generators fail even backups it's good to have a manual solution absolutely i'll see what i can do and just in case i shall replicate i shall see if i can find any of those leftover leeches so i can breed a new colony I you just know. sort of let that go without question. And That'll she... be all, Lieutenant. Yes, Doctor. And she spins on her heels and heads away. And on that, um, Commander Dalrum. Yes. I believe the time of your son's moving has finally arrived. I believe so as well. Okay, so it's going to start in this one. Where? And I should have had these guys ready. I'm a bad GM. I apologize. Okay. So, Commander Dolrum is here. So, Xyler hasn't had a heck of a lot of stuff. You know, station life and... Uh, sort of a transient lifestyle has not led him to have much in the way of possessions. However, those that he has had have been graciously carried by um, you, by the family, and for whatever reason, uh, Nyla, or not Nyla, Nia is here as well. Jared Nia. <clears throat> so, each of you is pretty much carrying a single plastic crate full of belongings for Mr. Zyler. As he, he sort of dumps everything in one of his rooms and turns and says, I'd really like to thank you guys. Um, I know it's not the first time that, well, it is the first time I've, I've moved out after a while and well, I'm not too far away, right, Dad? Father? Um, just down the hall. Exactly. Expect a random knock on the door. Uh, he just sort of says, well, if you could please calm first just so I have time to clean up. And both uh, Bodag and Vayan look at each other and share a small smirk. I just side-eye going, oh, the twins. <laughs> In my mind going, oh, twin telepathy. <laughs> uh um, I just go, uh, I will come, but remember, I was your age at one time, too, and I grew up on a station. 
it can't be much worse. Well, was your father the commander and captain of the station? Or father? The chief engineer. Ooh, that meant he still had access to the secret monitoring devices, didn't he? Did Zindi Station have those? Oh, who you knows? know, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> you can play along or, you know, play along, make a joke. It's up to you. I have not <laughs> thought in any way of that. I just will smile. He had the access codes to get anywhere anytime he wanted, no matter what. So no change then. Gotcha. Just remember to come down for family dinners, always. Yes, Father. They're mandatory. Including anybody you want to bring. Yes, Father. Um, Apatu brings out a, a fairly long plant that has been growing in one of the Arboretum bays for the last six months. Or not last six. The station's only been active for about four. The last three months. Huh. And he'll... It's a long fruit-bearing tree. Not unsimilar to an apple. Except the fruits that it grows are vary in color from red to purple. Uh, Commander Dolrum, you would recognize this as a, a an acras berry tree from the home planet. Uh, they've proven very difficult to raise outside of the Zindi home system. And Papatu is one that is gifted enough to make one actually thrive. And I just look at Apatu. You've been busy down there. Well, you know, between alien encounters, uh, threats to our life and limb on this station, you going out and possibly not coming back, the rest of us have to work, you know? And he smirks and gives you a small peck on the cheek. Uh, one would call my jollivanting working as well. Oh. Well. Well, that is true, but well, everyone, everyone thanks Commander Dolrum for and Captain uh, and Captain Crawford, Crawford <laughs> blanked for a second, and Captain Crawford for saving us against the Tholian invaders. No one ever thanks uh, Patu for ensuring that the um, the Zavis crop is harvested on time. Aside from you know my manager. We all appreciate your work, hon. <laughs> he nods. And then um, hands the pad of uh, care instructions to Zyler. Now be sure you take fall ah, be sure you follow these instructions very carefully, son. Otherwise it's going to wither and dry and the berries are going to turn sour. Zyler's eyes bug out at this contents. This is a sixty five step process, Dad. Well, of course. These things are notoriously difficult. Besides, if you can keep that going, well, you'll you'll be able to take care of yourself, this place, and your girl in no time. Zyler blushes. I just smile and chuckle. Uh, or a pet. If you can take care of that, you can get a pet. I don't know. It's, yeah. What is Cerberus Station's policy on pets, anyways? As long as they are domesticated, as long as they don't get loose, I don't care. That's good. Because I was going through the uh, security uh, lockers of what was left over from, um, from uh, Dr. Galen's uh, stuff, and there was a couple tribbles. Joking, joking, joking. As long as they're sterile, I don't care. <laughs> uh, Zyler smiles and nods and just sort of pauses and things get slightly awkward for a little while. Um, and then Jaren just sort of sad saddles over behind and just sort of whispers in Valen's ear, very, very loudly. Um, something about, you know, now that the moving party's over, how about we, you and I just go down to the bar? I turn. What was that? Well, I was... Uh, and he blushes beet red. 
Well, sir, um, I was asking if maybe we could all go down to the Eclipse. You know, it's been a hard move as he gestures at the six crates that you all hauled down. And I wouldn't mind, uh, you know, something at the Eclipse. Maybe... You know, Vane could join me. I'm, I'm sure you're too busy, sir. Um, well, I'm, I'm sure you're not busy. Well, I do. Perhaps, although the eclipse would be wonderful, you all go and and we can let Zyler settle into his new place. And Jaren just, yes, yes. Let's let's all go, all of us, all of us. And Zyler just says. Well, thanks, guys. I'll uh, join you guys in a bit. You do that. Enjoy your getting into your new place. Yeah. You'll rearrange it about 12 times in the next week. It happens. He nods. It, and if you need any help, you also know who to contact, as I point to me in a potu. Of course, Dad. Of course, Father. And he'll, the right. door closes and... Everyone heads to the bar with Jaren shuffling a few feet behind everyone, just looking a bit sheepish as he tries to get his foot out of his mouth. I fall back to Jaren. So, you wanted to invite all of us? <clears throat> well, well, not really, sir, but, well, um, I had an opportunity and I... Well... I just smile. She's old enough to choose. But if you hurt her... Yes, sir. I've heard about what you've done to the captain in sparring. The captain can't guard to save his life. He smiles and nods. <laughs> you have fun. I will let Apatu go, but I need to get myself back up to ops. Of course, Commander. Yeah, have a good, good time. All right. And Lieutenant Commander Demos, uh, is there anything that you would like to do? Yeah. Um, I'm going to be heading down to the security. Okay. <clears throat> Into the security office. QRS. And I'm going to call uh, Dolrim. Okay. Dalrum, the moving has just ended. You're on your way to the bridge when all of a sudden you get a your Ah, when all of a sudden your combat chirps. I click it. This is Dalrum. Hello Demos, uh do you have a moment by chance? We'd like to get you down at security. I can swing by there on my way up to ops, not a problem. Thank you. Okay. Look Minus, over. whose token is still not set, even though I thought I fixed that. Okay. Did that in the crossover game. Of course I did. Uh, <laughs> one thing at a time. And similar to that. Okay, we'll worry about those later. And Commander Daldrum. Okay. All right. I'll walk in and head to the chief's office. And walk in and go, Chief, what can I do for you? Uh, Commander, I just wanted to give you a little rundown of what I'm doing here. So, I opened up a new department that's going to be governed by some civilians I've selected. I know that uh, one of your adoptive boys has been doing some shifts here and there underneath Ember. Yes, uh, Zyler, we actually just moved him... Uh, quarters this morning, just moments uh, ago. Oh, that's good. So, what I'm going to be doing is there's going to be two branches of security. The typical branch that you'd see on a ship or a Federation station, it'll be manned and crewed by, of course, you know, personal officers. Um, the civilian side is to give us a different face, a nicer and more approachable face, anyone that might be hesitant to talk to anyone in uniform. And I'm going to be picking Zyler as one of these uh, leaders. I wanted to get your opinion on him. Uh, besides the father, but a character opinion. 
well, Zyler is a good, has good character, has great judgment. I've taught him as much as I can teach, being a former chief of security myself. Um, he knows what to do, and he's always personable. Uh, that's good. Couldn't be more proud of a son. Well, him and another individual will be working side by side then. This is to facilitate, as I said, better communications with the civilians. We're going to be anticipating, especially if we're going to be going public with everything, we're going to get people in here that might be running. We might be running from someone in uniform. Maybe not us, but if we seem approachable and we seem friendly, they'll talk to us easier. Kind of a mask, you know. I think that's a great idea. We've already had more civilians coming in um, on the two recent, tra recent transports and there's bound to be tons more coming uh, with us getting more traffic and as we explore the gate we could be having even more people coming through there so having more personnel that are more personable are def is definitely a good idea if you ask me coming from the Orion sector as a chief of security having that little extra tidbit of information comes in handy uh, the other thing I'm going to do too is if I'm not in the personnel section of the station, there will be certain days, uh, once or twice a week maybe, that I'll have the officers, including myself, <laughs> it's an old Earth idea, called pl uh, Plain Clothes Day. So you'll see me in out of uniform. I will be in uniform for any staff means, of course, but while I'm on patrol, I'll be making sure that I look more approachable. I like that idea. You're adapting a lot of old Earth customs here, almost making a police department and a mall cop. Well, kind of have to. It's a community we live on now. It's not just a starship. It's, um... Well... I have a different way of doing things. Very different. That's why Starfleet kind of fast-tracked me. Don't know if you know much about me, but... I've skimmed your personnel file, but I would always enjoy some more information. Well, feel free to ask. I'll uh, gladly tell you, as long as it doesn't turn my computer screen into that weird symbol again. Long weird story symbol? short. I, yeah, something at the Academy pissed off a lot of top brass. I don't want to talk about it any further than that. I understand. But, you know. I'm always here to chit chat too. I know I'm your technically your commanding officer, but being a chief of security, I before I know how it goes. If you ever need to chat, well, one last thing, and I would like permission to speak frankly. You may. Starfleet has rules and regulations. Some of them suck, but it's rules and regulations. I'm here to make sure the station's safe, and I'm here to make sure you and the captain are both doing your job. Because I don't want to be elevated to another position. I don't want your job or his job. But I need you both to stay with a level head. Now, on away missions, I get you're in charge, but I will strongly object and make note of any infractions or breaking of this prime directive. As you should, as I did, comes with the job. But you also, at certain points, some rules are bent a little bit. I was bending them to a degree as long as it's justified. But what happened on that planet, much, it was awful to learn about, shouldn't have happened. But yeah. That's just my opinion. I made the judgment call that they were warp capable by the conversations that we had. I made, thought it was a good idea to see what was happening. Whether that was the right idea or right call or not. As uh, somebody in charge, you take risks. It also comes with the job. It does. I don't necessarily like it coming from a security background, but. It happens sometimes. Well, I do look forward to being told no on away missions when I bring up a plan. 
Apparently that's uh, the common theme of a security officer, I've been told. <laughs> at and least the... with me, I can't guarantee the captain. But at least with me, I hear out all options. It was just, and I even did in that situation on the planet. Just happened that our options pretty much coincided. Well, the last thing of business I want to talk about is the AI. Um, I'm going to have Midas go along with the AI specialist through her code and the rebuild to make sure that there's nothing hidden. And at the same time, uh, Midas will be accessing the computer to make sure that any protocols and lockdown procedures of the former chief are expunged. And I've enlisted the help of our good doctor uh, to track down any other surprises. Yeah, there's no telling what all or uh, stuff that I was not necessarily fully aware of um, was had inklings of, but not fully aware of. I and Midas. Know. Who is Midas? I am Midas. He just points to, he just points to his little floating friend. Ah! I guess we have not really formally met. We've been ma <laughs> meeting in passings and things like that, but not necessarily formally met. Oh, yeah, that is right. We didn't have a real good chance to meet. Um, yeah, this is Midas. He's my little companion. Just Greetings. Pointed Midas. He's like, this is Commander Dolrum. He's actually not Starfleet. He's just attached with me. It bobs up and down. But aren't you kind of one unit? We're not. Well, he's an AI. I'm not. I'm hmm, transcendent human. Let's put it that way. So he's kind of your like your personal Rami. More advanced. He has feelings. And he gets upset. And he has his own desires and aspirations, uh, which are to help me, because he's ever so friendly, aren't you? And you'll just pat him a couple of times. It light, its inner light glows a pleasant blue color. <laughs> yeah, transcendent human, layer companion, big old metal body. <laughs> Interesting indeed. Welcome aboard. And just don't fall through a floor. Uh, if I do, I'm not going to... Well, it will hurt, but I'll feel more bad for the bulkhead. <laughs> and the engineers who have to repair it. <laughs> now, speaking of engineering, I'll do some things down there, too. Well, that's everything I have for you, Commander. I have... I'm sorry to rush out. I have to go see Keevan next. <laughs> not a problem. You have a job to do, and I better get back up to ops because um, the captain's still away. <laughs> yeah. I haven't had a chance to talk with him, not since you guys' hearing. Yeah. It, timeline has been a couple weeks, so I'm assuming there's been at least some chatting. Maybe nothing of importance, but some chatting. Yeah, just like typical reports. Naturally. Um, okay, so while you rush down to find Keevan, uh, we're going to move to Larsay's scene. We are... So Larsay, okay. it is finally time for you to put the darn suit on and have its All first right. in-void test. And Commander, okay. Lieutenant Commander Keevan, you are currently in ops and are basically Yamato's or Yamato's lifeline. So you're keeping an eye on sensor readings and whatnot while Yamato ensures that she, you know, make, doesn't, or that her suit works as intended, pretty much. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to cut to the outside because this is where all the fun stuff's going to be. Uh, though uh, before before we get there, let's just say that when she's when she starts shooting up, if, uh, brief out of character reference here. But for those of you who have seen the first Iron Man movie with Tony shooting up in the Mark III, it's sort of like that. All right. All right. So there's a long. If I was allowed, if I was allowed music, I would play the uh, space, uh, uh, 2001 Space Odyssey soundtrack at this point. But yeah, so you are fully suited and at an airlock. 
Okay. And uh, activating the suit com. Yamato to Ops. I'm all set to begin. We read you here, Yamato. Go ahead and be careful. <laughs> Understood. Heading out now. And on that note, there is your token. You should have control of it, so um, just run the scene as you guys like to do. Okay, so I uh, open the airlock, and then... Uh, <coughs> uh, excuse me for that. I, I have so, I, I <laughs> When I went to get something to drink, yeah. I got some root beer. All right, let's try to keep no, that clean uh, for the stream next time. But that's all right. Let's move yeah, on. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll do my best. But uh, yeah, open the airlock and uh, kick off the uh, floor, drifting out into space. All right, let's see. Let's start off with some of the basics. Activating thrusters. All right. Uh, do I need to make any checks here? Not at this stage. Okay. So I light off the thrusters and uh, start moving around, getting a bit of a taste as to how well it works compared to regular EVA suits. All right. It looks like the modifications are working so far, Yamato. Yeah. Look, looks like... Okay, let's see. Moving to send, going to sensor testing now. Are the targets set up? Are are the target is the target range set up? Deploying the drones now. Understood. And then I uh, use the scanning suite and the. Uh, I, well, the, the sensor advanced sensors I've put in the suit to mm -hmm. uh, locate them and then fly to that pro that location. All right, just for funsies, roll me a uh, insight engineering, and then the suit can assist with insight or with uh, sensors plus engineering. Okay. Okay. And this will be will have been a difficulty two given the nebula, but thanks to advanced sensors, it is difficulty one, and you guys need to start getting a bit of momentum. Yeah. Of that. All right. uh, this, yeah, the suit, not the station. I think I yeah. only gave Larce the suit for the time being. Yeah. And uh, for Larce, I'll assume her extravehicular activities focus will, uh, that will apply work. to this? That will work. Okay. Won't buy any extra D20s. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, wow. wow. Not okay. like I need assistance at first, but we'll go ahead and roll that. Yep, that's three momentum already. Got it. <clears throat> How does the suit rolling, do? Rolling suit. That's all right. Yep. Okay. And after sensing, after picking that up, I move to where the drones are. Okay, sensors are working fine. Let's move on to the next test. It dep I, let's move on to my on to the weapons test, and then I uh, <laughs> break out the well. I activate the pump phasers. Okay, and you've already accrued enough momentum. I don't need a roll for this. Okay, so uh, basically she bla <laughs> blasts away at the drones, Iron Man style. <laughs> Very well. Okay. Uh, and once once they're done, once the bla once the drones are down. Okay, that looks like a uh, decent test so far. Still got a few things to work on for this, but that should do do for now. Uh, your EVA suits sensors. Um small as they are but this close they t they can you've programmed them to tie them into the sensors of the station um it picks up an incoming ship coming from the uh entrance to the carcerai nebula huh 
Um, ops, I'm picking up a ship coming into the nebula. Yeah, I'm picking that up too. Trying to identify. Right. No need to identify as it begins a hailing message. This is our... This is the our, this is the Archaeus ship of Elena Proxima, calling Deep Space Fifteen. Archaeus, this is Lieutenant Commander Keevan of the of Deep Space Fifteen. We read you. We have arrived for our schedule. Elena has arrived for her scheduled con for her scheduled concert, and we request a meeting. Well, we request docking in one of your shuttle bays. Roger that. Uh, docking bay, um, shuttle, docking bay three is clear for arrival. Our Understood. We will meet you there. Arceus out. And uh, yeah, Larsay has probably been on the uh, uh, listening in. Uh, Yamato to ops. Do you want me to escort them in, or just bring it back, bring, or just head on back? Yamato, I think we may want to come right back on in. I don't think we want to scare her at all. All right. On my way in. Okay. And uh, uh, she turns towards the station and boosts on in. Okay. Good successful first test. Yep. Okay, so Arceus makes its way through this, the gravimetric distortions with fair ah, with practiced ease as if she, she may have a pretty darn good pilot at the helm uh commander dolrum you are uh, you ah i'm sorry you enter the bridge or you enter ops only to be told but well i'll let kevin give the report <laughs> commander we just got a hail from the archaeus um they are arriving now with our with their intended guests for the state. Ah, uh, Miss Elena, what docking bay? I sent them to docking bay three. It's going to be the most um, clear and hopefully without too much just. I have faith with that one. I'll meet them down there. You have ops again. <laughs> Thank you, Commander. Okay, so who wants to meet Elena Proxima? So obviously Commander Dolrum's going. Uh, Demos would have rerouted himself the moment he um, picked up with his neural link uh, okay. that there was a ship docking. He's like, yep, all right, down I go. Okay. I'm low man on the totem pole, so I'm staying in ops. Very well. Larsa is probably uh, at the moment uh, heading to her lab to take the suit off, which in the... Which will be Avengers style, uh, uh, first Avengers movie style. Naturally. Okay. Uh, anyone else wish to go or bring a supporting character? Nope, I'm just having a sick rave in uh, in the bed bay. Don't <laughs> mind me. That's that's the best place to have sick raves. Uh, I could have <laughs> uh, he I could have Henna show up or have my uh, yeah, I'll. I, I could have Henna show up, or uh, my latest character. Uh, the latest one would be like uh, secure, a uh, security detail, or okay. a hidden detail, or something. Sure, that sounds like a good thing for Henna to show up at. Okay, cool. So, where are? Okay, this is an activation. <laughs> it is indeed. So, what we are going to do is we are going to bring everyone down to the shuttle bay. <clears throat> Where the ship has just finished docking, it's only the it's only a scale two ship, and based on what you're looking at, it's a shiny, shiny thing, polished to within an inch of its life. Uh, really great, um, really great care has been taken to ensure that this ship is a unique design, not one seen in Starfleet for sure, probably civilian, maybe even custom made. There is a small hiss as the docking bay descends, and out steps this individual. Uh, 
I start walking over to her. Mm-hmm. Uh, she, uh, Demos, you recognize this immediately. She goes into a sort of a lax dis- defensive pose and gives each individual within the docking bay a quick one-up or quick once-over. Visual scanning for weapons, you know, pretty standard thing for a bodyguard to do. Commander Dalrum. Yes. This. I am Ginger. I am Miss. I am Mistress Proxima's uh, shuttle pilot, bodyguard, and okay, uh, tour manager, and occasional drummer. Well, you just wear so many hats, and I wear. Uh, put out my hand for a handshake. I'm Commander Dalrum. I'm the executive officer of the station. She shakes it, and you it's a very firm handshake. And she qu- quickly looks at Ebak and Demos, and... Right, I'm assuming that the giant robot is the security officer that I've been briefed about? Yes, this is Demos, our uh, new security chief, or recently installed security chief, I guess I yeah. should say. And she sticks her hand out, and... A pleasure. He was just like walk up and look at her as he's seven feet tall and he'll just take her hand and like yeah, nice to meet you uh roll me an insight plus security test please this will be a difficulty two if you have anything like a threat identification or uh target marking or anything like that that would work here uh anti-intruder protocol explosive investigation kravaga <laughs> Uh, I'd let you use investigation, but I'd boost the difficulty to three if you wish to use that. Yeah, it should be okay. Okay. Hmm. Well, you make it. I, I like that, a 20 and a 1. Yeah. The dice are min-maxing today so far, it seems. <clears throat> You recognize immediately that she is an android. A very good android. Uh, for the most part, she's... the. There's always a little bit of an uncanny valley when dealing with androids. But her muscular features, uh, twitches in her, you know, hands, feet. Everything seems just sort of regular to your uh, enhanced senses. It's most likely that an organic would not pick up, you know, that a random twitch, or that a twitch happens precisely one point, or precisely every 5.32 seconds, for example. But your processor and your brain notices that. And I'm just going to bank that threat. Just uh, raise my little eyebrows a bit. It's like, we talk afterwards. I suspect we, I suspect we will, Mr. Demos. And she'll quickly point, or she'll quickly, uh, without moving to greet, uh, she'll just nod over to uh, Lieutenant Ebak. Lieutenant? Uh, Ebak will just uh, nod back. She doesn't speak too much. She's main. She's uh, her, oftentimes when not doing actual legal stuff. She just stands in the background and looks imposing. Uh, uh, even if she's fairly even if she's fairly slender and average height her swords makes sense wait do you have your swords on you right now I mean he's taken the talent to have personal effects so yeah yeah and her first she's a joint trill and her first host was a uh, very highly skilled swordswoman Cool. Well, swordsman. So, yeah, very skilled swordsman. Not sure on gender at this point. <laughs> All right. So, with a uh, sh- uh, ginger takes up a guard position at the base of the ramp, and then shouts up, "All clear, boss. Come on down." And descending the gantry way, in wearing a modest dress of blues and purple, and the. The dress trails along behind her, however, it doesn't seem to touch the ground, uh, despite its lengthy fabric. 
it does appear that there is micro uh, anti-grav units um, sewn into the uh, base of the skirt in order to do so. And uh, what you see is a woman in her late 20s, early 30s, uh, short brown or short black hair, and a very serene expression on her face. She'll step forward and cock her head slightly to the side and nod, nod deeply towards Commander. Commander Doldrum, it is a pleasure to see you again. I believe our last meeting was on Starbase 24. It was, when I was just a lieutenant commander. It's a pleasure, Miss Elaine. Hmm. No, the pleasure's mine. My father always said that the universe works in mysterious ways, and I just like to see the patterns instead of coincidences. It's a good way of looking at things. My father was a good... My, my father is a good man. wonderful to hear that he is doing well and I hope you are doing well and that your travel out here was pleasant although I so I'm sorry that it was so long oh don't be it is with the assistance of uh, Admiral Riker my ship was refitted with one of the most advanced quantum slipstream drives that Starfleet has been able to produce the trip was a, a mere day if anything this trip to deep space which one was it Let's see. Deep Space 14 in the Delta Quadrant is going to be far longer. However, the Admiral wished I come here first. Well, we definitely appreciate your presence. May I offer you a tour of the station? Of course, Commander. And uh, um, ensure that uh, Ginger has full access to the performing stage. Uh, I will ensure. I believe that you have a full Arboretum. If possible, I'd like to set up my uh, tour appearance there. We can see if we can get that uh, situated for you. My husband will love that you're doing it in the Ar Arboretum. Oh, I was unaware that you uh, got married. Congratulations. Why, thank you. Now, how about that tour and we'll show you the Arboretum first? Of course. <clears throat> I hold out my hand so, for her to grab and we head on off. And she grabs it gracefully and uh, moves despite wearing uh, high heels of significant height, uh, proceeds gracefully, um, avoiding all, any and all, um, what's the word I'm looking for, uneven surfaces as she does so. Um, Ginger just looks over to Demos and goes, hey, big guy, got a lot of crates here. Can you give me a hand? Sure. And, uh, Evox, come here for a second. Ebok? Hennis? Uh, yes, uh, sh she'll, he she'll head over. I don't mind you coming down to greet individuals and diplomat agents, but next time, if it is a known friendly individual, don't bring your weapons. Uh, of, of course. Uh, it's... It's my... Uh, my swords are... Uh, of course. I'll, I'll, I'll try to remember that. You're dismissed. Make sure to keep a good distance between Dolorum and yourself. Not too far, not too close. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, yes, and she'll head, she'll head out. Okay, so at Arboretum's Arboretumville. Most of you are already here, apparently. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nope, he's, he's being around. he's being expunged piece by piece. Uh, okay. So once you guys are out of earshot uh, from the rest of the party, uh, Commander Dalrum, um, Elena slips you. Uh, Elena does forcefully grab your shoulder, and she's much stronger than her slight. Uh, will we frame would have her appear. Commander Dolrum, after our tour of the station, I do wish to meet with you and your uh, security officer, or your senior staff um, in a meeting. 
I wish that I ha I wish I was here solely on entertainment purposes. However, there is a second reason that I am here. I will make sure that that happens as soon as we're done with the tour. Do you want to give me a insight on to that, or do you want to wait till everybody's there? I would pref I would prefer to wait for everyone to arrive, Cam Commander. I would, despite the um, da. Ah. Despite the recent security change here, my reasons are, what's the word? Ah, I've lost. Uh, confidentiality. I understand. Now, and as you enter, and she, she uh, as quick as the, she is to change her tone, it changes again back to her persona as you enter the arboretum and sh her face lights up um, Commander Dalrum this would be a lovely time for you to do a insight security please difficulty of two and she <clears throat> as she begins to expound the um, loveliness of the arboretum and begins to uh, start uh, planning aloud where she thinks best for her upcoming concert. Would any of my focuses apply? Um, do you have, like, a personnel identification threat? Um, I would give it... I'd give you something like investigation, even if... Um, I have tactical systems, survival, hand phasers, hand-to-hand, -hand, star base protocol, composure. Uh, give me... Yeah, composure could work. We'll run that. Alrighty. <clears throat> okay. So, it's admittedly been several years since you've seen her. I believe you're, the incident on Starbase 24 happened in 91? Yep, 2391, right after I got stationed there. Righto. That would be approx. I believe that would be 14 years ago. And, you know, Starfleet and the Federation's healthcare providers are amazing and given her celebrity status elena proxima would have access to the best of the best but you're not seeing that she's aged at all since that time making a note of it mm -hmm. she doesn't seem to make a note she doesn't seem to make any notice of that as she is continues the walk around and Commander, are the birds in here, are they actually organic, or are they simply holographic? I believe they are organic. Uh, my husband works with the Arboretum and um, all of our plants in here. I believe he, his exact words were, live ones work better. She nods. Yes, yes they would. We're probably going to have to have some... Um, clothing cleaner on standby just in case i'm sure they have not been house trained or station trained and she makes a small smirk i smile well in a way they have because in the wild isn't it you know they can go anywhere hmm. yes well and she ah uh, ah uh, ginger and demos uh, follow suit uh, roughly 15 minutes afterwards, each of them lugging several heavy crates. Because, you know, anti-grav units are a thing, but, you know, hauling things are just far more manly. Uh, and Ginger is like, right, boss, where do you want it? And at that, they... Uh, Elena begins concert preparation. Just let me know. And as she switches completely into planning mode she just shouts back to commander dolan just let me know when you're ready commander and i'll come up sounds good i'll rally the troops <laughs> i'll turn around and walk through the door and com badge we will need a senior staff meeting as soon as the captain is back okay and it is a little bit early but 
I would like to give the captain as much chance to show up as possible. So we are going to take a bit of an early break, and then we'll just power through the actual plot. How's that sound, folks? Works for me. Roger that. Sure. Okie dokie. Uh, then I will... We will be back in 10 minutes, folks.
to the future. Yes, to the future. 2405. Hello, everyone. We are back. And we are having a meeting. So, uh, Commander Dalrum, everyone has strolled in. And on Q, there is a site to site materialization as Atlanta Proxima shows up. I just smile. Hello, Miss Elena. Commander Dalrum, Lieutenant Yamato, Lieutenant Commander Keevan, uh, Lieutenant Commander Deimos, Commander Aria. She's more, she sort of makes a small pun as she mispronounces your name as Aria. Eh, sorry. Let it slide. It's a music thing. My apologies, Aria. Well, Commander Dalrum, I am, again, I am most great ah i'm grateful for your station's hospitality your staff is very efficient in getting our stage show set up and i look forward to performing i right, thank you for the compliment i'll make sure that it gets sent along to those who need to hear it mm -hmm. however commander my i come with other uh tidings and they're not well Actually, they are potentially good news for the station. As she pulls out a Starfleet Isolinear data rod and slides it towards, slides it across the table to you. I will plug it in. Commander, my name is actually Lau. Elena Proxima is simply my performing identity. My father was Commander Data, uh, formerly Commander Data. Now he goes by Soong. And How is he doing? He's doing very well. He, uh, he has made rather lucrative uh, in, inroads into the Orion Exchange. He is slowly, but steadily, uh, gaining a foothold within them so that he can neutralize their vulture-like vulture business practices. You know I'm a big fan of that. You and me both. I think that attack may have had something to do with it. Of course, he hasn't actually left Orion Prime in a decade, but... And she shrugs. He seems content enough to follow this path for a while. That's what all that matters, isn't it? Mm. Anyways, Captain... Uh, or Commander. And as you insert the data rod, a the view screen of the galaxy changes, and the... Um, eastern portion of the Beta Quadrant is highlighted. Uh, roughly uh, three weeks ago, a piece of equipment in my father's office uh, sounded for the first time in roughly 20 years. It was a quantum entanglement communication device, one that he gave to his best friend, Jordi LaForge. He was lost with the rest of the Enterprise E, or with the rest of the crew of the Enterprise E, about 10 years ago. We'll put lo I'll put my air quotes. We'll put lost in air quotes because it sounds like you might have just found it. That's the hope, Commander. That's why. I've, that's the actual reason Admiral Riker sent us sent me out here. He wanted the apparent apparently these coordinates line up with, or at least are physically close to one of the gateways that your station reported finding. Well, the idea was that the E accidentally fell through the gateway. It's definitely a fa uh, within possibility. Yes. It, there, we weren't able to actually get much out of LaForge. He seemed distressed, muttering something about being imprisoned and something about their stealing the light. I don't... If you ask me, C Commander, he might not be right in the head. Mm. Or stealing the light. If I remember, LaForge wore optical implants. This is true. I believe that was still the case. He could be talking about them either removing the implants or analyzing the implants. There's just a too many unknowns at the moment, Commander. And, well, 
orders from the admiral as and as the uh isolinear data chip uh, uh two words begin to pulsate find them courtesy of admiral will riker i look down at the chip and go uh admiral riker never a subtle man is he not when there's something he wants So I'm assuming our mission is search and find. Be aware of any engagements. Retrie- retrieval is, I believe, your top priority. And whatever else is at your discretion, Commander. I understand. Makes it so that we get our first search and find and most of us get to go through the gate for the first time she raises a quick eyebrow I'm surprised you've never taken the trip have a head time (laughs) you know Tholian's attacking having Klingons and Romulans on our back doorstep diplomatic missions doesn't leave a whole lot of time for fun Uh, a small sad smile runs over her lips you should try having ginger as a tour manager yeah you're right that wouldn't be as fun anyways i'm i have a tour to or i have a show to put on and i do hope that you're back in time for it if that is you choose to go at all but who am i to tell you what to do and not Leave two seats in the front row, and Apatu and I will be there. Uh, she makes a quick show of one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm, I'll just leave half the first row reserved for senior staff. That seems to be the preferred uh, seating arrangement at station concerts. I look around the room. <laughs> I, I plan on it. I think everybody will be planning on going. Yes. I look at. Do we ha- know of anything in that region? Any species? Have we had any probes explore that region? Uh, so there is a quick pop up from the, or there is the quick scouting report from the slip near ship that discovered the gateway, and the bracer class that built the gateway. Um, it is, the gate itself is located very close to the extreme end of the galaxy. Um, I believe it was the uh, Spartan Crook's arm, I think was the name of the galaxy's arm. Uh, it should. It was at one point a very populous uh, neighborhood of stars. Uh, however, the, there does appear to be a significant number of stellar core fragments in the area. But other than that, no life signs were detected. The gate was built, and then the slip near class moved on. I look at the table. What are we thinking, team? Let's go. What do I think? Yeah, yeah I, I, I think we should probably go as well, but uh, we should be prepared for anything. I agree. Although, Captain's not back yet. I don't want him to come back to have a no senior staff. Um, mm. Something I was going to ask earlier. So the last transmission that we got from LaForge, mm-hmm. did it look like it was just a message? Were there any sort of medical data that came with it? And that's both an in-character and out-of-character question. Um, the message was pretty was a series of coordinates, um, a, a cry for help, and saying they're stealing the light, and that was pretty much it. Okay. Um, in that case, uh, as you know, someone reminds me of this because I wanted to be extra sure. I say, a standard procedure would be to at least have me or another medical officer go along 
Uh, but if we do need senior staff here, I believe that technically I am third or fourth in command. It really depends on what a certain commander's day is going like. That's fair. Um, looking around. Uh, no, Commander, I think have especially if they are in duress or um, have been held... We don't know what kind of medical condition they're going to be and we're going to need the best on the way team so you are definitely going to be of need not that your other staff isn't great but your you chief need that ladder i get what you mean Damos, i think it's a good thing that you come just because we might need firepower oh i'll definitely bring the guns Yamato, we're going to need an engineer. Understood. I'll, I'll be along. Keevan, you're the kind of the wild card. Make business as usual here, being an ops officer. If you want to come, I leave that up to you. As much as I would like to be known as helping find Jordi LaForge. I think for the sake of argument, I will stay here on base to keep an eye on things. And it, make it look like business as usual. Try not to draw too much suspicion. Probably a good idea with us being in a kind of a secret mission. Do we want to take the lunette or something smaller? If it's something that's causing the Enterprise enough trouble that they're saying it's a distress call, dilute that. That's my tactical opinion. I was tending to occur, uh, concur with that conclusion, but I figured I'd put the, that out there as a possibility. We could bring a slip near as a possible backup and reconnaissance, mm -hmm. and I can pilot it. How many, uh, out of character, how many slip nears do we even have? Uh, you have five slip nears, and you can cram one on board the Defiant shuttle bay, or not the Defiant, the Lunette shuttle bay, but you would lose the shuttle pods. As long as we don't lose the escape pods, let's slip, jam a slip near into it. The slip near can follow behind, though, right? It could. They're... It is warp and transwarp capable. I can tag along behind. If you you are comfortable with that, Damos, that's not a bad idea to have some two different ships to either split up or firepower. Yeah, it'll be fun. Cool. And I pulled up the data. I pull up the data from the the like them building the gate. If this area is a uh, area with a lot of stellar core fragments, stealing the light could be meaning that they are draining the sun. Could mean that, could mean a multitude of things. I, I think the reputation of uh, the Enterprise crew, they'd be more precise with their wording. I'm concerned that something may be affecting them mentally. Well, they've been missing for how many near years now? As about, I look down. About ten. Ten years if they were c captured, possibly tortured in duress. I applaud the Enterprise crew because they are amazing, but 10 years of being tortured, wouldn't anybody be in mental disarray? No, I agree. All right, well, we have our plan. We need in, uh, I need to at least send a message to the captain, tell him of what is happening. I'm going to invoke that. The captain has to stay on the station, and the uh, XO gets to go on the away mission. I smile. Hey, be a nice little uh, record in your uh, personal file, finding and saving the Enterprise crew. Just finding missing Starfleet, Enterprise crew or not, and it's not necessarily for the uh, the recognition. It's for saving our own people. Think of the things you could tell your grandkids, though. And just uh, give a little chuckle. 
I smile. Hopefully my grandkids are a couple of years out. <laughs> okay. And on that note, we are going to have a nice graceful scene of the USS Lunette disengaging and leaving the starbase. Okay. So we are going to cut to the main page. Nope. Anyone have anything else they wish to do before they head out? Uh, Demos is just going to calm down to security and say, uh, Acting Chief Security is now Scott Reiner, Dura Second Command for Security Division. Understood. Okay, so, uh, Keevan, since you're uh, choosing to stay behind, is there a support character that you'd like to bring along? And keep in mind that as this might be a heavy tactical mission, I am more than willing to allow more supporting characters on the ship just in case they might be needed at some point. Well, default is always mud for the helm. Mm-hmm. And I'm assuming Naya, because Naya likes being out and around. And it gives the captain a character. That too. Yeah, and uh, along with Larce, I'll probably have uh, my brand new security officer along, just in case. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll take whatever supporting characters we need. Cool. All right. Well, uh, Do we have a science? Uh, we have the bird girl. Uh, we have Lakila. <laughs> uh, Lakila is uh, good Frozen. with, or a uh, Frozen, not yeah, Frozen. Um, good with uh, time stuff and astronomical stuff might be useful. But works good for me. I'll I'll do it. Cool. Okay. Okay, uh, Mud reports the dock or undocking as a success, and is ready to head into one of the gates. Transmit that we are ready to leave and uh, wait for docking to guide us out. I want to slip near. Yeah, you are. I'll just put you over there for now. Just keep you. Uh... Yeah, and uh, one last thing. I, I think Larissa might have the suit along just in case. I'm, I'm going to say that it, um, you've probably brought it on board, but if you choose to bring it on the mission at just because of what it is, it will cost, or it will, you get, you will give me five threat for it. <laughs> right. Uh, that, that'll be good. But yeah, just have it on the ship just in case we need it. <laughs> gotcha. Okay, so, um, da, 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 da. I think that's everyone who needs to be around, at least on the bridge. Uh, science officer, that's whom I need. Okay. There we go. Uh, this is the first, or second time I think lakila has been activated, so, Keevan, feel free to activate him as you wish. And with that, y'all... Uh, this is going to be a scene change, so drop one momentum as you enter the transwarp gate. <clears throat> so the gate itself is very is a very smooth ride. Um, no bumps, no distortions of any form. Like even traveling the Bajoran wormhole had a little bit of uh, eddies to move around as necessary as occasion, but this is extremely smooth. David Mudd, you are, uh, yeah, it's as easy as pushing a couple buttons following the transport maps provided by the Slipnears, and you exit out on the other side of space, or on the other side of the gate. So it is still about a four-hour trip from where you are at high warp, while well, the coordinates that LaForge gave you. All right, engage high warp. Okay. Uh, if they're going to warp, I'm mm -hmm. going to go to Quantum Slipstream. I want to get there first to scout. Ah, good idea, because you have a 
because the Slipniers have a QSD drive just in case they are trapped somewhere and can't make it home through normal means. Okay, I'm gonna, so... I'm going to raise up Dolorum, just make sure it's okay. Uh, Captain Dolorum. This is Dolorum, how's the ride going for you? Nice little ship. Kind of jealous that they could have all this much fun. I'm going to scout ahead if that's okay. I'll take precautions to give everybody location as best as I can, and if anything does come after me, I'll uh, either play dead or I'll make it dead. Sounds like a plan. Keep us surprised of what you find, and we'll be following you close behind at warp. Will do. Okay. So you're going. Okay. So it. Uh, so what would be a four and a half hour high warp? Uh, speed for them is literally about 10 minutes for you, if even that. Never bothered looking up proper QSD to warp math. That would just boggle my brain. So, it, moving at the speed of plot, uh, you emerge here. So, at the outskirts of a, of a system, this is a... At, this is what you're seeing at extreme sensor range. Don't worry, the ship isn't to scale. Neither are you, for that matter. Um, but it is uh, what you're seeing is a yellow, a class K or a yellow star, similar to Sol, and this massive ship. Um, it would be a similar size to that of a Voth ship, so scale 11, scale 12, something massive. And this ship is pelting the star with some sort of energy beam, and the sun is sort of sputtering like a bad LED bulb, sort of flaring up, or not LED, um, those old style bulbs. Incandescent. Oh, incandescent. Thank you, incandescent bulbs. Uh, flickering around, uh, spurt, sparking up with a high intensity, then dimming down again. And for the moment, they, it makes no sign that it sees you. I'm just going to enter complete low power state. Okay. And just uh, look around for any rocks that I can drift along with. Okay. Uh, so the system itself, uh, there are four planets. Um, two of them are very s uh, small rocky planets that are close to the sun. I think they are class A, so similar to Mercury. And there is one class M planet. Uh, you'd have to actually scan it to see if there's any life or any of that sort. And out in the back, or far away, there is a Class J Jupiter-sized gas giant. But this system, there is a significant amount of debris, and you have no trouble finding a uh, place to sit. Um, roll me a Control Plus uh, con test, please. Ship can assist with engines con, just to s ensure that you are... Or just to s ensure that you are... Held safe, or not held safe, hiding safely. Uh, uh, also, are, are the Slipnears equipped with any um, probes? Uh, Slipnears prob. I would say that the Slipnears would have two probes. What classifications like are they warp capable probes? Uh, no, they're they're more likely short range. Short range, okay. Yeah, just to get a good idea of what's around this, a good idea of what's around the gate as it's being built. Would I have enough time to, while trying to find a rock, to program one to drop out and then skirt further away and head towards the projected path of the uh, lunette? Uh, sure. Roll me uh, control plus science, please. Ooh, science is my dump death. Hey, hey, this will be fun. Uh, difficulty of two. Okay. Uh, so Starfleet uh, probe technology is sadly not well equipped um, to deal with or is not sturdy enough to be handled properly by your uh, giant pseudo exo robo fingers uh, it's not you basically give up after a little while um, yeah so then what I'll do is yeah, do the Ship roll, and I'm going to be uh, linked with it with the neural, neural interface. Okay. 
Is it difficulty of two? Difficulty two, that's right. Okay, if I grab a momentum, uh, next to the dice, guys. Do How it. dare you? Of course, take it. <laughs> sure. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no focuses. Oof. Okay. Well, the ship can, uh, ship assist, can assist. So. And that's, um... Uh, engines plus con. Engines plus con. All right. Hey. It takes a little bit of uh, finagling to get the ship where you need it to go, but you, b after a couple false starts, you're able to securely, or not securely, secretly uh, slip the ship into a uh, into a debris cloud that is close close by one of the planets. I just blink at Midas. I'm like, well, it's gonna get cold in here, and I. Turn down life support. Hmm. Shall I en shall I engage in entertainment mode? Sure. Excellent. Knock knock. Who's there? Midas. Midas who? I'm Midas. Hello. We need to work on that some more. Acknowledged. Good attempt though. The point is that I try. Now that's funny. Uh, and about four and a half hours later, uh, the USS Lunette drops out of warp and sees the exact same thing. A giant ship that hasn't even moved during um, uh, Deimos's stalwart vigil. It has been in holding position for this long. We're going to scan and see if we can find Deimos in the slip near. Okay. Uh, sensor science and ship can assist with. Um, nope, I'm sorry. In yeah, insight science ship can assist with sensor science, and as Demos is currently in on uh, close mo or silent running mode, this will be a difficulty three. Oh wait, you have but advanced sensors. sensors. <laughs> two difficulty two then. Would I register as a life sign? No, but the ship would probably register. Probably has some sort of transponder. Okay. Uh, Eli, I'm, oh, did the that, all right sensors? Oh, right. So the that's ship. one momentum from Lakila. A damn good roll there. Oh, nice. And Very nice roll. Okay, so that's two momentum total. Got it. Yep, it's not hard to find. Um, so, uh, Lakila, you find the uh, duranium signature that matches that of the Slipnir in the um, debris field surrounding the closest Class A planet. We'll uh, go on low impulse to get over there yeah. uh, so we can clo uh, communicate in close quarters to not trigger their sensors. Understood. It continues to, or that station, or ship, I should say, does not re seem to register your approach. During the four hours, I would have tried to get the communication relayed to establish a tight beam laser towards uh, the limit if it got within range. Okay. I will say that, that you have allowed that, that enough time has passed that you may have fumbled a few times, but you're able to have figured it out by the time the lunette uh, approaches. And we pull up close to you and uh, I to see if we're within close range to communicate over that. So, Dorum to Deimos. Hey, Commander, Captain. <laughs> okay, that's a new title. <laughs> what have you uh, found out so far? Well, I found it. I can't feel my fingertips in the cold. But then, I'm a robot, so... <laughs> this ship's been targeting the planet for the last little while here. It's... The big. Star. Oh, Star, yeah. Big, I didn't want to try and piss it off by approaching it or scanning it, so I've been sitting here. Didn't want to go back to you guys and have it follow, so... Tried to launch a probe, and I gotta say... Starfleet tech is advanced, but backwards at the same time. 
I can't. Too many tiny parts. Well, why don't you have us uh, launch the probe and see if we can figure out anything here? Very good. I'm gonna keep aboard if that's okay. Yes, come aboard. Heat yourself up. Yeah, I'll hey. do a site to site. Okay, so you're just going to leave the slip near drifting for the time being? Um, I can pre-program with autopilot, right? Yeah. Should be able to. Fairly straightforward to do. Yeah, I'll, I'll have it follow the lunette at a good, safe distance. All right. Hey, Captain. Um, so to catch you up... Hello. Uh, Enterprise E finally touched base with the home system. They sent Lal, of all people, to give you this information and now you're on a brazen rescue mission trying to free them and have found this gigantic purple ship sucking the life out of a star ready yeah so um yeah so captain crawford is returning from the vitars so i suspect you have um mr naya unless you want to use Captain's prerogative and say you were hiding in cold storage the entire time, but... Yeah, no, I'll just use Nia. It's all good. Cool, man. Okay, so... What do you guys wish to do? First, we're going to send a probe. What data we can get from it. Okay, yeah. so you're sending a probe. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I, I, I can roll for that if needed. Yeah, so programming a probe, launching a probe, uh, is going to be control plus science to program it. And then the ship can assist with um, uh, probably sen uh, sensors doesn't seem right in this case. If you're going to program it. Computers? Yeah, let's do computers plus science. Okay. Um, um, uh, yeah, I'll do the I'll do the main role. I've got a very good, pretty good science and a very good control. All right, you do that. I have the ship already pulled up. Okay. Uh, difficulty? Uh, diff uh, do you want it to be an undetected probe, or do you care if they see it? Um... Undetected but would be nice, but a ship that big, I think, would see a probe more as, like, space dust. Okay. Uh, so, if you want it to... If you want to configure it for stealth operations, it would be difficulty 3. If you don't care about stealth, it will be difficulty 2. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and buy an extra dice with momentum. Got it. Making it stealth? Yeah. Okay. And computers for a focus? Uh, not for this case. Oh, uh, yeah. Wait, I don't need to spend momentum. I have, I have computer expertise. Oh. Would that work? At the talent. Add a bonus d20 to the pool for any tasks that involve the programming or study of a computer system. Okay, that would... I'd allow that, sure. Okay, so go ahead and add that momentum back in. Yeah, I don't need to spend it to get that dice. Yeah. So, uh, no, no focus. Okay. And that's three successes and four from the lunette, so that is one momentum. As the probe launches away, it makes no... Or the ship does not seem to care that there is a probe nearby. And what you are seeing from the probe is a very interesting um, array of chroniton physics. Uh, this ship and the beam that it is using is emanating so many chronotons that... Even literally halfway across the galaxy, Luxley and Dolmer of the Department of Temporal Investigations just woke up sweating cold. 
Um, the uh, the ship itself is very isn't shielded, which is odd, but it is very heavily armored. Um, some sort of very thick duranium tripolymer alloy, which seems to shrug off the average dings that it would have accrued at warp speed, assuming it does travel at warp. Um, what you find in um, the beam that it is using at the planet, or at the sun, I should say, is uh, enveloping the star in chronotons, which is speeding up its decay cycle and harvesting its energy as it does so. Ha! Huh. Uh, Commander, this... I, I have no idea what this thing is made of. I only have... This thing is... This thing... Oh, jeez. I cannot believe... This thing's so almost spinning in, my, spinning in the face of most laws of physics. All I know is it's got a... It, it doesn't have shields. It's got a duranium tripolymer hull. It's accelerating the speed and decay accelerating the decay speed of the star and harvesting energy at the same time and it's leaking so many chronoton particles I I I I, I don't even <laughs> we get it Larce yeah. um, it, thank, it, thankfully you have a science officer who could help yeah Ela can you take a ch look at that chronoton information that seems to be your area of expertise sure can meanwhile has anybody ever seen a ship of this style is it in our database is that kind of haul in our da database we need research i i can uh, certainly take a look i mean i i know a bit about i know a bit about some of the ships we have in our database okay uh, let's see um uh, uh, we'll get to I that short like Larce, we'll get to that shortly. Let's have a look. Let's see what Lar what Lakila does first. Uh, so, looking at the readings, this will be an insight science difficulty of three. And since it does involve um, chronoton particles, can we go ahead and use chronological anomalies focus? Absolutely. Would you like a third die? Yeah, let's go for that. Let's go for a third die. <clears throat> Oof. <clears throat> okay. Um, so this flies in the face of most of what you have... What even time travel should be. Um, the, the fact that this thing is leaking chronotons... It seems to be generating them. It's not like bringing them with it as a typical time traveler would. So <clears throat> there is the event of a time travel which leaves behind chron chronotons, and those chronotons eventually decay. But this thing is generating them. And that's not something you've seen before. Um... This is a highly unusual situation. Whatever this ship is doing, it's creating the particles. It's not coalescing them. Uh, which means we are now dealing with time travel. As I do a Picard facepalm. <laughs> Alright. Is there any way that we could transport in or somehow get into that ship? Well, um, does Naya have an idea? Um, you said, does the ship have any form of shields, or is it the no hull shield. that would make it hard to transport in? Um, as far as you can see, the you have to figure out how to break through the chronoton radiation, or the chronoton particles, but other than that, transport looks fairly straightforward okay um i might need to make some configurations but 
I don't think it'd be that hard to get us over there. How about getting us back there, Naya? Um, you might need to bring some trans uh, transporter enhancers with you, but I'm sure between Lieutenant Yamato and myself, we can get you guys back just fine. That's what I like to hear. Go ahead and try to make your modifications. Will do. We'll keep our sensors on it and see if anything changes. Um, so, Larsa, you've gone through the ship's the database and know this ship is completely alien to you. Okay. I'll uh, relay that. That's what I kind of figured, but it was worth a chance to look through our database. Okay. So this is going to be an extended task. This should be a fairly quick one. Uh, this is going to be a... I'll type it in chat. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty of three. There's going to be a resistance of one. Uh, this will be a magnitude of two. Actually, let's say magnitude three just because. And a work track of ten. And so folks who are trying to break through could use something along the lines of ah, some uh, somewhere something along the lines of insight science, insight security might even work. Uh, reason engineering, just tell me how you wish to attack it, and I'll tell you how it works. Well. I'd say uh, Nia takes point on this. Okay. Obviously, his thing would probably be reason engineering. I'm just trying to figure out what the good way to attack it would be. Um, With a hammer. Yeah. Percussive maintenance. Percussive. Um, yeah. <laughs> Hmm. Well, there's possibly ways to disrupt the chronoton going forward. Yeah, this is kind of... Um, break. I have a dumb idea. Can we... Can we possibly configure the transporters in order to maybe filter out the chronotons as they're transported over? I'm not sure if I'm wording that correctly, but... I'm just trying to see if that'll work. <laughs> so, some sort of tunneling beam. Basically, yeah. Huh, that's a good good idea as any. Uh, roll me insight plus science or insight engineering. All right, we'll do engineering here. <clears throat> Don't forget to advance Nia. Yep, already did. Gave him uh, another value. Cool. You must almost be maxed out on how far we can advance him, right? Oh, he's getting pretty close. Cool. I think. Um. <clears throat> sure. Um, I'll use the value I just gave him in this circumstance. Okay. Uh, which is any machine is my plaything. <laughs> All right. Evo looks at you. <laughs> Not without consent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, computers as a focus. I'd prefer it if you had like transporter systems, something like that. As... Which I do not have, so mm. I'll just say I don't have a focus. Yeah. Um. Even particle okay. physics would work, something like that. But right. But he doesn't have that. It's all good. Mm. Okay. And, and yes, he has an applicable focus. Oof. Oh, good. Nope. Uh, okay. Uh, so. Uh, two fifteens. Yeah. Close. But uh, no cigar. It's okay. Well, uh, yeah. So with that, would even it, with the wait, value would roll. His, would his experiment. Eh, would maybe his experimental device come into play here? What's your device do again? Um, It's essentially able to hack just about anything. So if I need to maybe break through some firewalls in order to make this happen, he'll do it. 
Okay. Well, you've already if... you've spent your value, so I'll let it happen. Um, okay. So I will give you one extra advantage or one extra success, which is enough. Yeah. Um, so you're able to using your tools ability to um, sort of pattern sense and break, you know, breaking and entering. You're able to figure out how the particles sort of shift and flow around the um, around the ship. So gotcha. it's not so much as pushing the particles aside; it's being able to dynamically target a uh, calm spot. Gotcha. <clears throat> okay, so roll me. Um, I believe that is two plus your engineering. So roll me six challenge dice, please. Okay. Oh boy! Wow. Okay, so so that's that a... complete weight. Uh, uh, I'll spend momentum to get rid of the resistance. Okay. Um, so after spending about an hour in the transporter room, not talking to anyone but himself, Jerenia reports success. You can beam onto that ship. The question now is where. Can we scan? Yeah, you can scan for life forms. Um, Lakila, you can roll a, in, an insight science. And the ship can assist with sensor science, um, given the chronotons. And because I have some threat, I'm going to increase the difficult, or I'm going to increase the critical threat 18 to 20. And this will be a difficulty of three, mi minus one for the advanced sensors. So difficulty two. Okay, uh, I'll roll for the ship. Sensor science. I already got the All ship right. and yep. critted. Nice. Okay. Lakila, what are we getting? Lakeela, uh, are we, are we one success? Uh, yeah. Are we still using the chronological anomalies focus as an applicable focus? I think that would work well. Yes. Oh, we'll take it. Yeah, that's three. uh, yeah, that's three. Momentum. Nice. Cool. So what you're detecting is uh, roughly 2,000 life signs that are non-humanoid uh, spread throughout the ship, most likely the command crew or the operating crew or civilians or whatever the heck they do. Um, you also are detecting roughly 150 humanoid life signs um, in one of the um, lower decks near the stern. And because you're a science officer, you do get to ask one free question. Oof. And if someone has suggestions for him, feel free to ask. What is the... I would ask, like, what is the presence of the other species around the humans? Like how many of them are around where the humans, uh, humanoid life signs are. But that would be me. Let's let's go with yeah exactly. Um, what are the humans surrounded by the unknown um, unknown life form? Okay, so there is. Uh, you're able to pick up the uh, humanoid and other familiar Federation species within the same vicinity. So a couple Vulcans, Trill, um, Tellarite, um, Andorians, Cation, random other species that might be found within the core rulebook. Uh, all... One Horta. Yeah, no Horta. No Horta. Oh. There's all... Nighthawk has one Horta. This universe has reached its Horta limit. Mm -hmm. um, the... Uh, you do detect several life signs in surrounding decks, but none where they are. If that, uh, none in the immediate vicinity. Um, however, given the location where they are, where the prisoners are being kept, it's deep. Uh, it is. It will be difficult to get them out all at once. And let's face it, there's 150-ish life signs. And you're a very small ship. It's going to be extremely packed if you can bring all of them back. Does Lunette only have one transporter pad, or is there two? I believe Lunette only has one transporter pad. 
We have a cargo transport pad. Because I think our um, should be equipped with them. Yep. Real quick, though. Yep. Um, so, just so I confirm what I heard earlier, it's a scale like nine above ship, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Then let's spend a momentum to see if the Enterprise is inside the ship somewhere. Oh, that makes That's sense. A good one. It's mm -hmm. a really good one. one. <clears throat> there is no sign of uh, any technology or hull composition or even pieces of um, Enterprise or Federation uh, technology within the ship or even in the vicinity i should say damn i was kind of hoping because we could just you know jailbreak them to their ship and they could fly it out but it's not a voth situation unfortunately uh demos was just gonna walk up to delrim just lean down like protocol says we have to make contact first before we do anything but I would opt to go first with transport enhancers on my back. We could always use our communication as a distraction while you guys are extracting. That's skirting the line pretty good. It's skirting it. As long as the communication happens before the transport, we're doing exactly as what we need we need to do. Very well. I'll get ready with a transport enhancer. Get ready with transport enhancer enhancers. Take whoever you need. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, You're speaking, uh, Shizno. So who's on the bridge right now? Is Neon on there, or is he in the parlor ship? He's in the transporter. In the transporter? Okay. Uh, he's going to tap... He's gonna tap the uh what's her name? Kyle? Keel? Kel. Yeah, yeah, Kel. She's she's Bajoran and I I picked the name from uh Exonoma. Uh, so he'll tap her, uh Lakila and Nia. I think it's where else? Okay, so give me a second here to so I can this is a rescue mission, and I can bring Dura. Dura is on the station still, actually. Oh, She's fine. She's in command. Or yeah. second in command. Okay, so we had Kale and Naya. Okay. And, of course, Demos. And the little robot guy. And I just realized I've moved every... I've actually activated this, so everyone sees where you're being beaming to. Cool. Oh, well. Okay, so... And uh, just to uh, just to confirm this, I'm uh, giving you a point of threat from, uh, for Kiel to have her uh, phaser rifle. Okay, so the point's been spent. Um, that means that everyone can have a phaser rifle if they so choose. I'm just going to keep my Type 2 on me. Okay. Um... Also, Lakila. Uh, oh, yes. Um, Lakila is coming along. And whoever else wants to join. Uh, Scotty, do you... Let's see, that's four, and we're six players. Uh, Scotty, anyone you want to bring? Um, if I care. I'll take uh, Rafati. Rafati, okay. And does our doctor want to come along? Yes. Does Aria want to join? I mean, I could go, but then you wouldn't have someone to patch you up when you inevitably get shot. So... I think I'm going to stay on the ship for this one, simply because, again, if I go and I get injured, you kind of lose your only doctor. That's fair. Uh, anyone you want to bring along, ELH? Uh, no, I think I've dominated the last several combats, so I'm going to sit this one out. Very well. Okay. So, um, we'll quickly do the scene with folks on the bridge. 
Uh, does Aria wish to be on the bridge well for any of this, or will she just be in sick bay waiting with the inevitable dermal regenerator? Um, probably closer to the transporter room than sick bay, but something along those okay. lines, yes. All right, then we'll have a quick thing on the bridge where Captain is going to open hailing frequencies, if I recall correctly. Yep, I'll instruct Mud. Stay hidden. Open a hailing frequency. Okay. Um, you, uh, the channel appears to connect successfully, although it is currently not visual. I'll start talking. Uh, I am Commander Dolrum of the USS Lunette, the unknown vessel. Uh, we are out here doing research and would like to connect with you. Uh, you receive a series of screes, chitters, and shrieks uh, for a couple minutes as the Universal Translator attempts to parse and translate the language into something you understand. Uh, however, eventually it turns into uh, English around halfway through what sounds like a pretty good monologue. <clears throat> taking this light as it has shined on the Holy Genesis homeworld. You are um, those in uh, those who take those who absorb the Holy Light shall become enemies of the Jinsul and shall be processed accordingly. They shall be saved or they shall be uh, ah, I've lost that phrase. Terminated. I'm sorry, we're unfamiliar with the Jensul. You are not of Jinsis. This is to be expected. Your war, your, if you, ah, if you exist in one of the light or in one of the light spheres that shines upon our distant home world, our our ship will, one of our ships will be along to sell to sell ah to grant you salvation. Where is this homeworld? We are curious travelers. We'd love to meet new people. We are... Uh, uh, we... Ah. Uh, ah. Sorry. My mind just... Bleh. My mind just took walkabout. <clears throat> Sorry. The Holy Genesis is in the... Is in the Holy Trinity of Stars. One, two of red, one of blue. Is it here in this galaxy, or is it far away? It is it is here, so that these points of light that shine upon it can be salvaged, and brought home, and further, um, and, ah, and we can give their light to the cause. Light to the cause? What do you mean? The holy, the holy radiance, of course. For they... For they take the light and give their gifts to us in turn. This glorious vessel, uh, the, this glorious vessel is a gift from the radiance. Have you ever met these? Yes, we commune with them on a fair. Yes, our illuminators share their truths on a, on a frequent basis. And at this point, I'd like someone to roll a transporter, uh, transporter skill so that we can see how well you guys beam aboard this, their ship. So this is going to be transporting to a non-transporter pad, which will be difficulty of three. Thanks to the advanced sensors, that becomes difficulty of two. I suppose I can do that. Okay. <clears throat> I'll get the ship. All right. All right, so... Uh... Uh, en engineering. Yep. Yeah, uh, sensors engineering for the ship or control engineering for the person. Okay. Do, do my best at. Okay. Nothing from the lunette. I'll get an extra die for momentum just to be on the safe side. And probably no focuses. None of my focuses apply. 
Yes, I don't think the Lunette has a transporter chief. That might be something to look at for season two. But yes. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. Uh... Wow. Okay. There's your. Th uh, so you get one momentum back from that. Congratulations. Nice. Okay. Uh, so, um, uh, while you're speaking, uh, Commander Dalrum, uh, Mud just turns around and gives you a quick thumbs up. I do a head nod and keep asking questions to see, A, if we can get more information so, like, we're, we'll triangulate things, but also just to keep them unaware. All right. Uh, yeah, they are very... Pa very passive and cryptic in their responses. Uh, they keep an even tone, but that could just be the translator. Uh, you're getting the fact that stars generate light on this Gensis, and they are taking the light somehow. They're and killing worlds in the process. Eh, they don't seem to care about that. Fanatics. Yep. Okay. Um, almost sounds like the Covenant. Okay, so we are heading to... I believe you guys beamed here. Uh, no, you did not beam here. You beamed here. Okay, uh, so you energize at what uh, one of the floors just above the uh, prison level. Uh, your tricorders are, uh, thanks to the ship, you are able to get a good layout of the area around you, but there's too much chronotons to figure out precisely where the enemy may be. Uh, just to make sure, Demos is in charge of this away mission? Yes. Good. Just go look at everyone's like... Okay, standard protocol and procedure. We don't fire unless fired upon, and we try to defuse the, defuse the situation as fast as we can. I'd like to get all of you back home safely, so... Understood? Yes. Understood. Sir. Uh, sure. Understood, sir. Alright. Okay. So... Uh, nope. Okay. So... What pops, what you see skittering towards you is one of these gigantic things. Oh, that looks terrifying. Yep. Oh, boy. Uh, so they stand roughly oh, seven and a half feet tall. Uh, they are s sort of a cephalopod, arachnid style of creature. They have six appendages that propel them forward. And another two sets of, of appendages that would act like arms. This thing is carrying a fairly large rifle, automatic rifle style weapon. Um, what is of interest to you is that the giant bulb on the top that would typically be a thorax on a modern day insect seems to be its processing center. Uh, there are dozens of eyes all around it, granting it 360-degree vision. And a pair of mandibles at the front begin to skitter and screech as it begins to raise its weaponry. I raise up my hands. Like, greetings, hello, shit. Mm -hmm. Not a threat. Yeah. My name is... Demos. Mm -hmm. well, I'll, I'll uh, move down here so he's not directly aiming at any of them. A wise idea. Because he begins to fire. Ah, oh, shit. And why that didn't appear, I have absolutely no idea. Um, the sheet's... Right. Focus, yes. 
and something's borked with my roll 20. Hey, that's fun. Okay, apologies. Um, I just have to close out and reopen. So I've got the jam, but I get to go now. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, just to keep things moving. Wow. Um, yes. As he raises... His gun explodes. <laughs> not quite. As his gun, as he raises and pulls the trigger, his gun goes dead. Absolutely dead. Um, it drops it and sort of um, prostrates itself before it. Um, now that the uh, Universal Translator has picked up their language, um, the Jinsul, uh, the Jinsul's screech and squeals uh, turn into more like begging for the spirit to once again inhabit its holy weapon so that it may engage these um, these trespassing heretics. However, um, that is its action, so if someone else wishes to do something, now's the time. Oh, this is technically combat. Well, we could talk our way out of it. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, you are a robot. You could probably convince it that you took the power out of it. Just straight up lie to it. <laughs> um... I am your god. <laughs> Alright. Uh, I'm just gonna take a step forward with my hand still up. Minus, and I'm gonna have Midas float a little bit up to the side just so he can see it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll say to him, like, Sorry for boring your ship, but you appear to have humanoids like the others here. I'm simply trying to help them get back home. I don't wish to fight you. It won't end well if you try to go against me. Um, it's at this point that the gun on the ground lights up again. And the Jinsu makes a motion to grab it while screeching something about die light-stealing heretics. Um, however, his action is going to be to pick up the gun, so... Well then... Uh, Lakila's gonna go ahead and try to scan for a weakness on these, just to, because they're an unidentified... We don't know what... Ah, okay, that would be an interesting one. So, um, Insight Science, I believe. Or possibly inside security if you want to try that route. Uh, difficulty two. <clears throat> okay, you make it. Excellent. So this is an uh, this is very interesting. Um, you are seeing a significant amount of chronotons coming from the weapon. Um, and just sort of backtracing your scanning records, when the gun died, the chronotons were no no longer were emanating from it. Uh, and when the gun once again reactivated, the chronotons, you know, once again emanated from it. <clears throat> um, you are actually noticing that the chronoton particles are sort of swir um, swirling about the gun itself. Um, <clears throat> and that seems to be its primary form of power. Uh, for the creature itself, it appears to be fairly chitinous, um, with a, a fairly thick uh, armor plating, similar to that of a scorpion or other hardened insectoid. Um, you could try to go for the eyes, but there's just so, man so many redundancies up there that blind taking one out would not be productive. However, with all those eyes, it would stand to reason that there is a fairly advanced uh, sensor processing node somewhere probably close within its bul ah, probably contained within its bulbous head. If you're able to disrupt that, you could probably disable the creature without killing it. Looks like these things are 
having the weapons fueled by the chronotons and we may be able to disable them. We just have to try to find a nerve center. Okay. Well, I got an idea to try, but let's see what happens first. Okay. Well, it's its turn again, so it's going to shoot. And let's hope my sheet's working again. That'd be nice if I could, you know, hurt you. I hope you roll double 20s again. <laughs> yeah, of course you do. Security. The deuce is going on with my bloody sheet. Okay, I'm just going to have to roll everything manually. Fine. Double 20s. Well, that's close. Uh, yeah, so he picks it up, but the shot goes wide. Causing a white stream of lightning to arc from the gun. And it just sort of impacts sort of just over Demos's shoulder on the back. Um, right there. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> well, I may be able to do something or I'd have to wait until next round. I'm sort of na running this narration style for the moment, so yeah, do what you need. Alright, I'm going to pull out my little invention that we talked about. Okay. And I'm going to hook it at the door frame. And see, uh, just let the force field kick in. Okay. Okay, so you are creating a. So you. For the device you talked about is a portable force field generator, I believe? Yep. Okay. It latches on and makes a force field that uh, lasts until end of scene, or I don't know how much damage it has to take before it drops, but we can just use whatever the book says for force yeah. field. Fair enough. So, I'm just going to do that. All that. So I imagine like a little spike hitting the wall, and then it turns green, and then blue, and the force field kicks in. Okay. So it um, realizes that something's wrong with its weapon. Uh, it makes a motion to head t to charge you, and is immediately blocked by the force field. It staggers back, um, similar to one of those dogs that runs into a... Um, that runs into one of those uh, static Blaster. cling sheets around no. doors that I, you know, don't really like seeing dogs like that. Anyways, and it chitters and screeches a bit more. I look to everyone like, do you guys have a plan? You can stall it, I can kill it, but... Run. Mm -hmm. Do that then. Yeah. So, uh, your tricorder indicates that you need to make your way to the red exit, that is, to the east of the map. Right. Rafiti, take point, I'll follow. Yes, sir. All right. It is this way. It is that way. Rafiki, you round the corner to find another one of these things. Ah! It's like the GM has been using other actions to move the other individuals around like actual, you know, security agents. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so it raises its gun, but I will let you guys have an action if you wish. What am I standing in front of? Uh, so what you're standing in front of is... A project it's a projection, a holographic projection of what is probably what you look to be the sun and a progress bar. The progress bar is currently at 50 50 ish percent and ever slowly increasing. I'm gonna dip down behind the panel that I'm like in front of anyway just to have okay. a little bit of cover. Taking cover. Gotcha. So that's your minor. Um, I won't shoot yet because I've not been shot at and I'm going to follow directions. Okay. Uh, anyone else wish to have an action? I've been taking a little liberal with the other guy, so I'll let you guys finish up and then we can go in proper action sequence. Um, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to hear, do I hear uh, graffiti uh, 
Do you mean that there's another one? I would assume so. Right, I'll just move over to the door here. Mm -hmm. Um, is there any equivalent to say like a wall panel like on a starship where I can maybe access certain parts of the ship? Or just like a console nearby? Uh, nearest console at the moment would be where uh, what Rafiki is using for cover. Gotcha. Um, okay. I'll just take point behind Deimos then. Okay. Uh, Keo? Um... Okay, one moment. All right. Um, well, he figures things out. Lakila? Uh, probably just standing in rank with the others and um, holding with... Okay. Uh, are you ready, uh, Yamato? Yeah, sorry, I had food in my mouth. It happens. Uh yeah, I'm going to uh, take Kel. Uh, Kel is going to basically move into a... Uh, she's going to move, but uh, be ready with her rifle. And okay. move, into, move with the rest of the group and be ready with her rifle. Okay. And at this point, we are going to enter combat proper. Uh, so player characters can go first. Uh, so if someone wants to take an action, they can do so. Damos, you want to try to talk us out of this one? <laughs> I think all diplomacy options have failed. Let me introduce them to diplomacy. Um, Please tell me I'm... that's the name that's on your phaser too. I'm gonna be giving the GM three threat. Okay. And what? Why do you wish to give me three threat? Demos reaches behind his back to grab at something that's not there, and as he pulls his arm around, big old machine gun starts to appear in his hand. Oh good. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh yes, he has a he has a BFG. Oh my. Okay. He's like, Kale's just got us. Stare at that thing. Ooh, boy. It, where yeah. the heck did that come from? It also costs one momentum. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Um and Yeah, it's um gonna fire with it. Alright. Roll your attack. Uh daring plus uh security, I believe it or sorry, control security, difficulty two. Uh, if I take aim, that's a minor. That's, or would, I think in this instance, pulling your, th uh, thing is, it would be a minor? Okay. I would think that, yeah. <clears throat> okay, if I could use one more momentum for an extra dice. Sure. Um, Go for it. I feel like this could also generate a lot of momentum. Yes, it could. Yeah. Okay, that's <laughs> two momentum. Um, and... Is that's nine challenge dice I gotta roll? Oof! Spice Do it. Go. Okay. Uh, now, are there any effects from the weapon? Is it vicious or anything like uh, that? It has. So the quality is inaccurate. So I think actually the difficulty is raised one. Ah. Okay, so you'd only get one momentum from one that. Momentum. Yeah, so it would be at three again. Um, and then it also has knockdown. <laughs> ah! So that is... Now, someone refresh me, please, on knockdown. Because I think if you even get one effect, that happens. Yep. Okay. Cool. So, as the... Um... Oops, sorry. I was just going to say, each shot sounds like thunder. Because it's Thunderlord. It is indeed. 
<laughs> yeah, at, at this point, Kel's got to cover her ears. At the, at yeah, the Rafiti punishment. didn't realize that it was happening, so he's thinking he's getting shot at. <laughs> yeah, Just Kel's covering her ears from the re from the from the sound. Okay. Okay, so I would have to spend two threat points to negate that, and I'm not going to do that. So, yeah, um, so it is knocked right off its feet. If you've ever flicked a spider, that's kind of what it looks like as it goes uh, spinny, you know, spinning and landing over there. I assume that machine gun is a lethal thing. <laughs> I never thought to actually look at that. I mean, it, what type does it shoot? Does it shoot energy? Um, I'm just going with the whole idea that it's based off like how the the gun works in the game. So it's just arc damage, so lightning. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so probably lethal, but I'm going to worry about that in reviewing the rules after this. So, for the time being, we'll just treat it as a phaser rifle with, you know, added sound effects and stuff. So, um, next up is one of their turns. Um, it is going to be this one, who is going to spend his major action to move. I believe that is... All that I can do, let's see... Oh, no, movement is minor. So it's going to move, and it is going to attempt to shoot at Mr. Demos. Made a glowing weapon pop, pop out of the I mean, hand. yeah. Want to test me? Pretty much, Bring yeah. Double <laughs> 20s. Uh, let's see. My sheet says that I think both of those would be successful. Let's see. Nine, that, that. Yes. Um... Yep, that, was, that would be the two successes necessary. So, roll. Four of those. Okay, so that is going to be... F that's not right. Uh, what's your secure... Oh, that should be higher than that. Okay. Roll an additional three for that. Okay, so that is <clears throat> four, five, six, seven, and the debilitating ability. That was giving what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, um, debilitating. If you are injured by this weapon, d the um, difficulty two for first aid is increased by one. Uh, so that is seven damage in total. Yeah, ouch. Um, so whatever your resistance is, is um, do you get injuries? I guess you could tap your value or spend a couple momentum to give yourself the advantage, something like that. Uh, really want to save the value. Uh, is it okay for using momentum? I don't. Uh dropped sure yeah sure. I mean okay it's two I think yeah it's two mm -hmm. okay um so that is this guy's turn which was him yeah. would I feel like that's a lethal uh, shot back at me that would definitely be yeah pretty lethal okay so he's had his turn, and you've had yours. Okay, who wants to go next? Um, I'll have Nia go. Okie dokie, and what would Nia want to do? <clears throat> um, he's going to run up to one of these consoles, and uh, observing what Rifati saw with this uh, progress bar and... The sun, mm -hmm. he's going to uh, t take out his device and see if there's a way that maybe he can shut this down. Okay. Um, yeah, so if you're looking to shut down the console, shut down the sun-draining weapon, what? or are you just looking to... Uh, uh, looking to shut down the sun-draining weapon. 
Okay, uh, that is going to be a difficulty of four. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah trying to deal with a gigantic, you know, sy advanced system with technology you're not fully understand, and an entire ship whose purpose is literally to drain the sun. That's a yeah. very difficult thing to do from a random panel. So, good luck. Yeah, fair. Good um, luck. Let's see, well, the experimental device will bring that down to three. Mm -hmm. Um... Uh, uh, computers or firewalls as a focus? Yeah, I'll let that happen. Okay. Um, I'll use our last momentum to buy a third D20, and we'll pray and see what happens. Okay. Good luck. Wow. Wow. Ooh. Okay, so um, okay. That's, that's five successes. Five successes, so two momentum back. So you experience success uh, from this random panel and display. The you appear to your your advanced uh, break and enter tool somehow manages to bypass their systems and their sun. Uh, it dear, yeah, their sun sucker. Let's just call it that for now. Um, ceases. Um, Immediately, every display in the area that dis that is displaying this, because this is a fairly commonly uh, portrayed symbol, um, uh, it immediately goes red and alert cl alerts start flashing around. So, yeah. If they didn't think you were heretics before, you are now. Okay. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. It was on. Okay, so this one. I'll just and I'll just kind of like whatever point to the one that's still in the room that's not knocked out. You just be like, I killed your god. We'll see how it goes for you now. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. I'm not bringing you back, Nia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this this Jinsul enforcer behind the force field uh, attempts to just blast it and try to bring it down come on double 20 at this point I'm just rolling for failures Ooh, come on. Yeah. so that's significant and we'll roll I'm going to say that the force field needs to take let's say 15 points of damage to go down. That sounds like a good number. I recommend writing that down, Demos, because I will forget by the end of the session. Okay, so that has rolled 6 damage against it. And the fourth one is just going to spend... Oh, no, it's not the fourth one's turn, because this is not D&D. <laughs> okay. Um, that would be... Uh, Kiel, Akila, or Rifati? Uh, Kiel will go next. Okay. She'll uh, move into a pro proper firing position and let loose with her rifle. Okay. Which one are you shooting at? If you shoot at the one that's prone, that would be an advantage. Yeah, I think I'll do that. Okay. Right. So that's, uh, that's uh, control... control security. Difficulty of two. Or you can do this one way because the advantage is either going to be difficulty of one or I will let you deal um, one additional challenge dice. What, take Choose um, one. I'll do the extra challenge. I'll, I'll do the difficulty one. Okay. All right, roll your hit. And, and I'll do an extra extra dive with momentum, just, just wanting to do as much as I can. And um, I'm also hand phasers as a focus. Naturally. Okay, so you get two momentum back. 
So yep. roll your challenge dice. I tried hitting the button to roll and it didn't. So I'll just hit the challenge dice. Yeah. I'm wondering if something's just borked with roll 20. Well, it's just my sheet for some my sheets for some reason. Oh well. Wow. Nice. Eight points of damage. Okay. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Uh, one momentum to cancel to uh, resistance. That would be wise because they are definitely wearing some form of. Uh, their their bulbous head is covered with armor, and the rest of their chitin seems yep. to resistance. So they do have some resistance. So. So. Yeah. You're saying just one. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So with that, uh, this one suffers an injury. Um. I, can you injure with a fa with a phaser? I guess you can. Yeah, so phaser shots by default are all non-lethal unless they specifically say otherwise. Yeah. But it is a non-lethal injury. Makes sense. So it is injured, but does not appear to be completely out. Um, do. Oh, yeah, the, the rifle also has accurate. Ah, and what does accurate do again? Well, uh, if inaccurate... It... If in, With accurate, oh, you have to take the minor action to aim first. Uh, okay, yeah. Ah. And, yeah, so you moved, which would not have been the aim. So next time... Yeah. Cool. Works yeah. for me. Okay. Um. Then it would be the fourth Jin Sewell's turn, and he is... Or she, or it, is going to move Dang. his way up here. And that's pretty much all it can do, is to get in a firing position. Okay, next up, I believe Rafati. I'll aim and fire. Okie doke. Very well. Uh, do you have the Type 3 phaser rifle or your Type 2? I'm going to say I have the Type 3 phaser rifle. That strikes me as something security oriented. Okay, who well, you My guy's more of an investigator. He has forensic science and investigation as focus. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> well, you have activated him, so you can do something else with him if you'd like. Well, he has hand phasers as a focus, so he has that a focus. Works. I'll worry about what I want to do for act to get him here in a little bit. So I'm going to aim and fire. Okay. And is the difficulty two or difficulty, difficulty two? two. Right. Uh, however, um, if you're aiming, let's see. You can reroll any number of d20s. So. All right, I'm aiming. I have hand phasers as a focus. I'm going to re-roll that zero. That would be wise. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, shot goes wide. Um, I got his attention. Yes, yes, you did. <laughs> okay, I believe... Uh, so all the Jinsul have gone... Nope, the, the one that's down will spend his turn to get back up again. And so he'll continue moving despite the injury. And he will slowly limp um, towards... Uh, no, sorry, his minor was to get back up. So he is going to take a pot shot at uh, Rafati, who is currently within line of sight. Uh -huh. There would be cover, but I'm going to spend threat to negate the cover and see what happens. That will hit. <laughs> so that is eight points of energy damage as it arcs its way through the uh, sky and zaps Kiel, leaving na some nasty burns. Uh, Rafati, you mean? Rafati, my, yeah, you hit. I, yeah. Sorry, I said Rafati. My bad. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right, then. <laughs> These I have not put value yet. Um, anybody opposed of me using two momentum to avoid the injury? 
Go for, go for it. it. Nope. Sure, go for it. I'm thinking we're going to get an emergency beam out here soon. All right, I avoided the injury. Okay. Do I still take the stress damage or no? Uh, you still take the stress, yes. But I you may just... only have one. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Uh, so I believe everyone has gone. Nope, Lakila. Yep, I'm going to see that shot that it was just taken, and I'm going to move back behind where Kale and Rafai are, and I'm going to take a shot at one of them. Okay. Uh, which one? The one that's been injured or the one that I don't believe has taken a hit yet? Injured. Makes sense. Okay. I'm blanking. It's security and... Um, control, control security. Difficulty 2. <clears throat> yeah, I said character death could be a thing. I mean, supporting characters one thing. I know. Uh, except for Demos. Okay, that hits. Uh, so feel free to roll your damage, Lakeel. Uh, for phaser type 2, it would be 3 challenge dice plus your security. Okay, that is three, and you have no momentum, so that is, uh, so a little bit gets through, but not enough to cause or any serious concern for this particular one. Gotcha, and I just move Lakeel up behind. Okay. Okay, we are now into, now... Um, does Midas get to do anything, Demos? Um, uh, no. No, okay. He can, but he's not going to do anything. Midas hovers behind you and makes weeping noises. <laughs> yeah, he's like, not this again. Okay, other Jinsul. So now, new round of combat. I believe the Jinsul will get to go first this time around. And the one yeah. by the force field is going to take another stab at things. Literally this time, as he's going to po try to just wail on the force field with his gun. So I'm just going to roll a couple challenge dice. Just to see what he does. Ooh. He almost done as much damage to the force field with the butt of his gun as he did pointing and shooting last time. Uh, let's see. So, force field's still up, but... For, for how long? That's the question. Uh, Starfleet. Who right. wants to do something? Well, I'm assuming they're going to be hostile and they're, they're trying to kill us. Oh. Me talking about the Prime Directive and Protocol, too. Well, you have new protocols now. Yeah. Okay, uh, question. If I want to make a spread shot, does it have to be something with a gun or something I can declare? If I just want to like, wide aim at everyone. Um, if you want the actual spread or area effect, you got to charge. But that's only with weapons that have charge, obviously. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well. Yeah, we don't even have the moment to do this. That's okay. I am going to keep shooting. Uh, I'll shoot at this one here. But, yeah, I'll, um... Sorry, I blinked. Which one are you shooting at? Uh, the one that's not been shot at yet. Okay. Uh, yeah. Alright, the one you actually have line of sight to from your current position. Yeah, is it, uh, is it a minor to take cover? So, like, I can, like, I have some partial cover? I believe it is a minor to take cover. Now, what would help you is that you can spend two momentum to target a secondary target uh, which is basically spread because it does half the attack damage rounding down but it is too momentum to activate that yeah I don't think we have any at the moment no nope. nope. okay so then I'm just gonna take a shot at them where is my sheet Did I close up my sheet I close up my sheet I am a scrub. Oh, don't you hate it when that happens? 
That's another daring and security. Oh, uh, yeah, and that creates just means I don't get the benefits of uh, the aim action. Because I actually increase the difficulty. Ah. Uh. You know what? You know what? I think do I have one? Do. Uh, I'm gonna use my milestone as a determination. Oh, okay. So that's two on max successes. Okay. <clears throat> and like, fire at him. I'll I'll sweep the legs. <laughs> okay. Cool. <laughs> All right. So you have two successes on top of the two successes. So that's two momentum. <laughs> well, say bye bye to you. Okay. Um, I believe, <laughs> if I remember my momentum or my damage right, that's enough to push him past injury and right into unconsciousness. Oh, good. No, if oh. that's that's dead. Like, you just vaporized him. Yeah. Well, that's... Let's see what happened to a bug when you electrocute it. Same thing that happens to everything else. Thanks, Storm, for that worst line ever. I, I like that line. But then again, I'm a simple man, so... Hmm. Okay, so your hammer literally thunderclaps that thing out of existence, leaving, uh, leaving the weapon and a disintegrated individual from it. As the weapon hits the ground, it's... Uh, um, power seems to dissipate, and it lies dead. He must look sad. Do you actually have facial expressions? I'm not sure. Uh, minor ones. Okay. <clears throat> you don't worry. Okay, uh, so it is now the other one's turn. It's going to spend a minor, minor move action to hobble its way forward slightly so it gets a better line of sight. And it's going to try to shoot at Demos. Because, after all, Demos has just proven to be the biggest threat on the board here. Oh, it would help if I was in the right field. No, that's not enough. Uh, it's uh, due to its injury has thrown off its aim, causing the shot to go wide. Uh, who wants to respond in kind? I'll do it. Okay. And let's see. Um, I think rather than aiming, I'm going to do the charge action. Okay. And... Hmm. Okay, just give me a few seconds to catch up on some of the effects. Yeah, so you can spend a... Minor action to prepare, and then you can do either add area, add intense, add piercing two, or vicious one. Yeah, just needing to check check the effects of intense or pier intense piercing, piercing and uh, resistance. Yeah. Yeah, and vicious would inflict more damage. Um. Hmm. <clears throat> It's already already been injured once. Um, I'll do uh, I'll do piercing. Okay, that seems fair. Roll your dice. Yep. I'll buy an extra die with momentum. Sure thing. And phasers is the focus. That's a hit. Yep. Roll your damage. Yep. Okay. That is seven plus all the piercing. Yep, that is enough to knock it into unconsciousness. Okay. So it slumps to the ground 
And as it does so, its weapon also uh, loses power. Okay. Okay, so this one is... in. It's like talking a free action? Yep. Talking is free. Uh, when Demo sees that one goes down, he's just going to look to Rafiti and everyone else. He's like, go, now, down that hallway. Going. I can't select them yet. <laughs> On it. Okay. Moving. So, just because it is a good tension, as you guys turn and start running, the force field goes down, and the other two begin to skitter through. Running now. <laughs> uh, Demos, what are you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm running too. Okay, good. Because you weren't moving, and I was wondering if we were going to have a heroic last stand. Because no, no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna detonate myself or jump off of, into a waterfall. <laughs> okay, so we are going to make ourselves into here. And you there's guys... more maps. There's yes, there's more maps. There's a big one. So you guys emerge in what appears to be some sort of yeah. It appears to be a room where briefings could be held. Um, there's a centralized podium in the center, and lots of space around for... Well, they don't sit, but there's raised platforms where they could uh, rest their uh, bodies upon. And anyone who is doing a scan can tell you that there is one more of these life signs naturally at the uh, center down to the jail cell proper is there like a door here yes there is a sliding um you know those doors that were like on the death star that sort of uh diagonally closed in on each other something like that i'll try and trip it so it closes okay uh roll me daring security difficulty of two just because it's an alien system and because I know that Naya it would love to assist, Naya, you can assist if you'd like. I would love to. Yeah. I assume it'd be daring engineering no. on my yeah, part? Yeah, daring... Oh, well, oh, you're boy. trying to trip a security mechanism, so in this instance it would be security. Okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah, so... Cool. Alright. All of one. <laughs> Probably not going to, but we'll see. Well, he did roll a one. One success. Unfortunately, it doesn't matter because yeah. unless the person doing the original task rolls at least yeah. one success, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, matter what the assists roll. Yep. So, Demos, the technology just literally... As soon as you reach it uh, to activate it, the panel dies. I'm just going to beat with the butt of my rifle. <laughs> the panel shatters. And what is in what's interesting the... is that there is very little circuitry beyond it. I hate this ship. <laughs> um... The sound of the uh, skittering claws uh, uh, gets ever closer. Uh, is there another panel nearby? Um, if you had two momentum, I'd allow you to create the advantage, but you don't, so no. So, yeah. I forgot I have Midas try, because he actually has computers. <laughs> uh, sorry. That's yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, this is the finale, so I'm not sorry. I'm ruthless. Um... Where are those life signs? Let's get heading towards us right now. Okay. And I'm gonna call to the ship. Captain Dolrim. Uh, roll me a... Nah, I'll just let it happen. Uh, Commander Dolrim, you are... You're on the bridge, waiting anxiously for things to report... And you receive a very distorted message coming from the ship. 
This is Dolrum. Can you read me? Uh, again, a lot of interference. We're under fi under fire. We're proceeding two coordinates. Might have to do emergency beam out. We will get everything ready for emergency beam out. Roger. And yeah, um, I'm going to look to uh, Lakila. Uh, what were those life signs? Uh, from your time at the, from your time looking over the schematics, they are in the yellow. There's a spiral staircase at the base of the yellow tile at the south of the map. Naturally, where the guy with the glowy sigils is. We don't actually see him there, so I guess we're gonna go there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right, so you guys make your move just as this guy shows up move. behind. <clears throat> I'm going to fire at him. <laughs> Nia, please say you moved. Uh, I think Captain may have gone AFK. Oh, there he goes. No, I'm here. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so uh, we're going to do a run and gun in, in, in initiative, so this will be fun. So, sorry, I just have to add him to the turn. And then I'll go back. There we go. Okay. Uh, Am I so, able to who's shooting? use a determination to give us momentum? I... Don't know. I don't think that's a thing you can do. Only with uh, the commanding officer could do stuff like that. Um, and I believe there's a talent for humans that lets them do it. Yeah. Best thing to do is create, you know, spend your determination roll, and then that probably will generate a momentum or two. But that's about it. What you planning? Yeah, I'm just gonna fire normally. I I need two more momentum to do what I want to do. <laughs> All right. Roll your death. Roll your attack. Uh, yeah. That'll do it. Nine more dice. Nice. Okay. Uh, so knocked down. <laughs> yeah, that is knocked down. Um, just for fun, I'm going to spend two points of threat so that he ignores that the knockdown. But he's still going to take the injury. All right. uh, uh, so a large black um, scorch mark arcs its way across its, um, for lack of a better term, I'm just going to call it part of the sensory bulb, as it screeches in pain as several of its eyes go uh, get burnt skitters and tries to scrape at it ever so slightly or ever so frantically I should say okay so because of that gone then it's now its turn uh, because it's injured in that way difficulty increases so I'm going to spend threat and let it roll an extra dice D20. It's going to try to shoot back at Demos. <laughs> oh, so it would hit, but there's a complication. Interesting. Okay. <clears throat> I got a complication, but everybody uh, else isn't going to like it. No, I'm sorry. That is 13. It needs a 12. Yeah, so it misses, and there's a complication. Uh, so it's going to... I mean, I like idea players giving me complications what do you like or what do you think elh well i'm just saying they're all carrying energy weapons they and are. you know if you shoot an energy weapons and containment fails you know yeah. grenade in the in the pocket as it were okay let's run with that um i was gonna say have the door come down on them because <laughs> <Doom. laughs> he yeah, didn't but... the attack yeah 
Uh, let's see. Based on how their technology works, it is more likely that the door is going to slam shut on them. So I'm going to do that. So as it scrapes and squeals, tries to uh, skitters back a bit, raises its gun to fire, and the door immediately slams shut on it. And just for fun, oh. yeah, there's a loud gonging sound as it does so. And we've just alerted the big one. I uh, think the loud thunder producing gun alerted it. Yeah, probably. Oh, nope, that one yeah. hasn't gone yet. Yeah. Just maybe. It's the other maybe. one that has. It's like, oh, it's oh. a star on the horizon. How nice and quaint for <laughs> Yes. Okay, so who wants to go next? Nose goes. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well drift toward no. <laughs> He's <stays> close. <laughs> um... Yeah, I guess like we're still going to head towards his life sign, so whoever wants to get closer. Okay. So movement's a minor action, so you can still shoot if you'd like. Well, I moved behind the door, so or behind the wall, so I can't, still can't see. Okay, so Rafiki, or Rafiti has moved. Lakila has moved. Does Lakila wish to do anything else? Keep in mind, you're the science officer with a tricorder, and, you know, scanning stuff is an action. Let's scan stuff. Let's try to... You know, scan for any other hostile energy signatures. Right? Oh, a wise idea. Uh, insight science. Uh, insight science, or in this case, daring science. Either or. Difficulty of one, since you already now know what you're looking for. Okay. I'll get, take it. Yep, you get one momentum out of that. Got it. Uh, so you are fortunate that there are no other life signs other than the two that are currently behind the closed door and the glowy dude in front of you. Uh, but you do get to ask a free question if you'd like. What is it? Do we see anything specifically different or am I scanning anything different about big, uh, big glow? Uh, so the glowy guy... Um, what is interesting about him is that there are several, um, free-floating clumps of chroniton particles floating about him. Uh, similar to how, you know, uh, a moon may orbit a planet. Um, it's like this, but with invisible chroniton particles. This guy in front of us has chroniton particles floating about it. Be careful, everyone. Right. Hmm. Which means it might be able to suck energy like they're using the chroniton beam for. Hmm. Okay. So, hmm. it is now... Well, you guys have made a heck of enough noise. It's going to come to investigate. Uh, likewise, it doesn't. It won't be able to move and shoot in one turn, but it is coming up here. Oh, hi. Yes, hi. So that's his turn. I believe uh, Kiel and Naya still have to do something. Okay. Um, mm. uh, Kiel will move into a position where she can shoot. Okie dokie. And it probably will shoot. Do I still have my? I, I I don't. I for charge. Does it? Does the effect that I give it persist until I use charge again, or does it? Uh, it's a. Or does it? Re it's a single action, so it dissipated when you used the when you shot. Uh, okay, so just a, just a basic attack. Okay. Roll your damage, or roll your hit. You can do it. Yeah. Um, I think rather than just continuously by reduce, reducing our momentum, I'll give you a point of threat this time. Sweet. For another dice. Okay. That's always something you guys can do. I do like threat. And focus. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> well, you succeeded. Yes, you yeah. did. And so, okay, so eight challenge. Okay, so that is. Oh wow. Um. Okay, you're obviously pointing at this guy. So you, you charged, didn't you? No, she moved. No, just the regular weapon. Oh. Yeah, because I I had to move for my minor action, so I couldn't have charged again. Okay. So. Um, so hmm. Yeah. Um. I suppose I'll spend a momentum for piercing. Okay. That would be a wise precaution. Uh, so piercing, that's a piercing of two, correct? Per point of momentum, yes. I believe? Yep. Cool. Yeah. Um, so because Lakila scanned last turn, I'll give him this base because he's watching as you're shooting. Uh, so as you point and fire, um, Lakila, you notice that two of the part, uh, chroniton clouds, or asteroids for lack of a better term, migrate into the sort of the tips of his what you thought were ceremonial headgear and as it fires you notice a discharge uh or you notice that the uh the headgear uh activates some sort of force field um allow minimizing the amount of damage that gets through so he does take some damage but not enough to cause an injury Everyone, it looks like those chroniton particles might be used as a shielding device for. You don't say. What was your first clow? <laughs> okay. Um, I believe uh, Naya. I think you're the last one to do something. Yeah. And what um. I asked the same question as last time. Uh, any sort of uh, wall panels other than the consoles in the room we were just in? or uh, Let's see. Yes. So there are wall panels here. Okay. Um... Hmm. would scan for weakness, but he has, like, a reason... What's his reason? Science. Eh, it's 12, but it's not great. Alright. Um... Uh, Midas can assist you. Yeah? I think that's an option. Yeah. He has an 8. <laughs> but he has computers! Oh, no, I'm looking at Demos. Sorry. Um... He's an 11. He has computers. Mm hmm. Um. No, Nia's not. Um. Yeah, he's going to move over to this wall panel and see if there's. Uh. Is there any way to filter? Chronotons out of a ship? Uh, this. A ship, that them? A, sh a ship that generates them, you'd have to find their central power core, basically. Okay, good. Hmm. Uh, would Nia happen to know maybe what would most easily disperse chroniton particles if uh, it's available in the ship? Do you have particle physics? I mean, you're welcome to try insight science, but that's going to be fairly high unless you have a particle physics focus. Yeah. Okay. No. Or or even temporal mechanics or something like that. Yeah, it's not something he has. Um, well, we know if this ship can produce its own force fields. Uh, you haven't seen them use any yet, but possibly. Um, Keevan, check your uh, Discord PMs. Okay. Wait, oh, not me. Um, I'm going to, to attempt to just uh press some buttons, see if we can uh. 
maybe try and make a force field around the big glowy guy. Okay. Uh, big glowy guy. So you want... Okay, because you have your tool, I'll let that happen. So this is going to be a daring security. Um, okay. I will let Midas assist if Midas wants to. Um, sure. This is going to be a difficulty of three. Um, but okay. the um, the advantage is that a force field will be created, but okay. depending on how well you succeed determines how much power it has. Gotcha. <clears throat> okay. And what am I rolling? Uh, insight security, or daring security. Okay. Let's see what happens. Um, okay. I'll spend a momentum for the 30 20. Okay. Um, and he, yeah, he will have a focus here. Appears as a focus. Oh boy. Well, you you got two successes. Let's see how well the let's see how well Midas rolls. Midas. Computer as a focus. Midas. I'll let that happen. Yep. Hey. <laughs> All right. One momentum for Midas. Cool. Nice work, Midas. Thanks. Thanks, tiny robot friend. <laughs> Okay, so uh, it's going to be a full strength force field um, that will be 20. Uh, it has a strength of 20. Um, so the problem, so, you know, good thing. Uh, big guy now has a force field around him. Bad guy is, or bad news is, well, that's also the main way that has been blocked. Um, also, further bad news, it's now the end of the round and the doors begin to open behind you. Good, good. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just going to draw this here. <clears throat> oh, I'm having fun. I hope you guys are too. Cool. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Are you putting it all the way around him or just across that door? Oh, yeah, that was my... Yeah, I... Yeah, do you want it all, like all around him? Yeah, I want it all around him, um, not like in front of the doorway. Yeah, my apologies. Um, oh, good. To... So it's know. a tight squeeze, but maybe we can get past him. <laughs> uh, okay, so we'll just draw this around him here. Cool. So, well, it is. We're still in initiative because there's still bad guys with guns. Uh, the injured one is going to limp forward um, because it's start of initiative and it's now their turn and is going to try to shoot at Demos. Oh, I thought it was actually getting the door open. Oh, yeah. Thank you for reminding me. Okay, so he's Ooh. going to limp forward. Yep, sometimes even the GM has to be kept honest. Uh, but the other problem... Well, there's no other problem. Not yet. Okay, what are you guys Can doing? Can we make the dash down the hole? Um, Hang on a second. I think I have an idea. Scanning this reminded me and brought up anion particles can disrupt chronicon particles. So we might be able to take it down at shielding and possibly deactivate their weapon. Can our phasers emit that? Can we emit that? Usually it's a particle generator, but potentially we could jerry-rig something. Um, I would... Some... Ooh, that's a good idea. Um, perhaps uh, you could jerry-rig a phaser, um, but that would leave the phaser unable to do damage. Or you could jerry-rig a tricorder, but of course that would... Uh, disable said tricorder's other functions... Um, or do something funky with the matter trans with the uh, transport enhancers that you're bringing with you, but or you can. We kind of need those. Yeah, kinda. They're just suggestions, really. Um, so you know, those are options. <clears throat> I'd say sacrificing my own phaser for that because I'll need the tricorder just in case. I'd rather f sacrifice the phaser to jerry-rig it and my tricorder to work as a functional particle gen. Oh, consider that your project right now. Okay. 
Uh, so, uh, Lakila, I guess, so, let, I guess it's, you're taking your action? Yep. Okay, uh, this is going to be a daring engineering. Um, if Naya wants to assist, I will let that happen. Well, if anyone wants to assist, I will let that happen. Uh, can be done daring engineering. Um, particle physics, scanning tools, something like that would work for physics. Or actually, chroniton technologies too. But yeah, mm-hmm. good techno babble. Like that. Let's keep it going. The chronological anomalies, it's definitely in that wheelhouse, so. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, sure. I'll have Nia assist here. Uh oh. Yeah. Okay, so you yeah, could spend your determination to re-roll those. And I don't think we've added anything to them yet. Well, I'm, uh, I'm I'm playing the supporting get determination. Oh, if you yeah, sorry. If you can give them values, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, whenever they're yeah. activated. Yeah. So for a split second, I forgot that uh, Lakila isn't your main character. Right. Uh, silly GM. Okay. You can give him a, a value if you haven't added anything to it, which I don't think you did. No, there's no values yeah. under Lakila at this point. Yep, yeah, so... Uh, yeah, so if you haven't given him a focus or up to any of his attribute points yet by activating him, yeah, you can give him a value. Yep, let's do that. Okay. Any idea what said value is, or shall we just assume it is going to somehow be related to this circle? particular circumstance i like the idea of every problem has a solution at this point that's a good one a nice general one for a science officer to have i like it Hmm. but i'm lousy to re-roll your roll cool okay yeah so uh re-roll your rolls Coming now. Oh, they were so close, too. We just need one. Or do we need both? Uh, uh, it, was, uh, it was a difficulty three. So. Oh. Uh, not enough, I'm afraid. Um, so, it is enough that um, should you survive un- your ne- until your next turn, I will allow you to redo the, you know, carry it on with a reduced difficulty but it's not immediate so gotcha okay so that was Naya's action and that was Lakila's action okay who's next uh, that would now be one of the so the illuminator is going to attack the force field and you notice that he does that he doesn't have a blaster rifle like the enforcers do. His is more of a, a bladed energy pistol style. Uh, so he is going to just attempt to m- shoot at the force field. And considering it's all around him, there's no real way it could fail unless he complications, which he does not. So we'll roll challenge dice to see how much damage it does. Did he succeed? It's a point blank shot, so yeah. <laughs> I basically gotcha. rolled for complications, and that would be three points to the force field. Okay. Who I wants to do will something? Be keeping track. Um, I, I'm going to do something awful. <laughs> That's GM? what I like to hear. Yes. Uh. No, I'm going to wait for him. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to fire again at this, uh, this boyo. Okay. Shoot. Well, that smears him on the wall. Yeah. Uh, so that... So roll your damage. I'm assuming that's still with your thunder weapon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he is completely disintegrated. <clears throat> <laughs> Uh, we are not making allies today. I would yeah. say the kill count for those at home is currently three. Yes, indeed. <laughs> now, can the Jin Sul do anything to bring that body count up? Let's find out. 
Okay. Uh, and then I'm gonna move okay. over here uh, and look at the big thing. It's like, yeah. So it's it's not any bigger than the enforcers that you've been fighting. It's just far more ornately um, dressed. The uh, there are several glowing sigils fr around its body, um, as it has a and it has a in one of its claw mandible dex uh, manipulators. It's holding a fairly vicious looking energy pistol that is bladed on both ends of it. So it's being held. So it's not a pistol f grip. It is a gripping the back of a gun. Yeah, grabbing the gun at its base and then blades protruding on both sides. Top and bottom, I should say. That looks terrifying. Absolutely. That's the point. Look, we're just here for our people. I'm going to look at the group, but like, that's what we scanned, right? It was humans? Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, humanoids, etc. Their life signs are getting closer now. That's all we want. We want to take them back home. We'll leave. If you interfere, well, you're not going to get between me and doing my job, so. And we're just going to pat the side of my gun. It's like, get in the room, see if we can find them. <laughs> yeah, you guys did forget about the second Jinsul that was coming from behind the door. Just, you oh. know, there were two of them, after all. Only one had made it through before, you know, it was their turn. Um, you know, kudos to him for being that brave to watch and most of his buddies get disintegrated. I, I wouldn't call it... Well, yeah, you, uh... That's how fanatics are, man. Uh, let's see. So... The response you get uh, can best be translated as the filthy heretics were going to be useful uh, once properly reprogrammed. Now they will just be burned. As it begins to let out a series of chittering squeals and screeches as it begins to throw itself violently against the force field box that you have created around it. I say we move quickly so we avoid the burn. That would be wise. Go look back at Nia like, Nia, fall back. I'm assuming that means towards you. <laughs> yes. Yes. You're in yep. the forward position. I'm going to take you through training when we get back, if we get back. And okay. down we go. Okay. Down you go. The uh, enforcer that is still chasing you is firing randomly at the moment, missing all of you for theatric effect. So we are going to translate ourselves down here. That would be here. Oh, sorry. He's not supposed to be here. Oh, thank God. <laughs> okay, you guys descend the spiral staircase. And the as you get down, it you weren't noticing it before, but it gets cooler as you're now approaching the more exterior side of the spacecraft. Uh, the religious iconography uh, ceases at the door above you or the deck above you. And down here, the walls are stark barren. There's very little in the way of... <clears throat> of uh, markings of any kind. And there's no panels on the wall. There is a, there is this office uh, that does seem to have a terminal. Uh, it's currently unoccupied. And your life signs, or your scanners, indicate that, yes, you have come to the right place. Um... The rooms, uh, yeah. how do I get rid of the turn order sign on this thing? Uh, the rows extend for what seems like miles, but your tricorders say that's only about six or seven hundred meters. But there's rows upon rows of them. Each of each of them is filled with with a body of some kind. Some are still alive, as your tricorders can say. Others have simply expired. But there are several humans, one Klingon, and a lot of other Federation species, as well as several others of species that you don't recognize. 
um, during the way down, I'm going to be pulling Nia and uh, Lakila to the front, yep. just behind me. And I'm going to look to Rafit, uh, Rafiti and I, I can't remember his other name, sorry. Um, Kiel. 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 Uh, and, and basically tell him, like, you guys watch the back. You two, once we get into the room, it's clear you try and figure out how to get them free. And I'm right. going to boot kick this door open. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> uh, so let's. I'd like to roll another um, daring engineering or control engineering. Now that well, there's still a guy following you. So daring plus engineering for Lakila and Naya to get their uh, phaser reconfigured properly. Oh yeah. <clears throat> um, I'll just have Nia like take Lakila's phaser so he can take the lead if that's possible. Uh, or never mind. Yeah. Sorry. We uh, good. Yeah. Uh, oh, this is fine. This is only going to be difficulty two now. So. Uh, let's see. Daring engineering. Mm-hmm. Uh... Actually, I'm going to use the talent that was uh, that uh, that Lakila has mental repository. Character can take time to focus during a task. Reduce well, the difficulty. Is... This is daring. I feel like yeah. we don't really have that much time. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, I didn't realize he had a talent already. Cool. Yeah. It, it, it's a good idea, but yeah. we don't have the time for it. <laughs> Unlock the... Um, computers as a focus, maybe? Uh, no, not in this case. You're trying to reconfigure okay. a phaser. Sorry. No, that's fine. Okay. Still, that's enough. You are able to... Uh, reprogram the phaser emitter to emit anions. Um, it's a short-term thing, but it will work well enough. Uh, so the loud commotion has gotten a few shouts from a few of the cells. Some of them are in common, others are, or some of them are in Federation standard, others are not. But they pretty much all translate to help us. Tap the combat and see how well the communications are sounding. Um, so, Captain, uh, let me roll a challenge dice just to see how bad things might be. Yeah, I was looking for an effect. I didn't get one. So, it's okay. It's kind of warbly distorted, but you're still able to make th each other out. So, Commander Daldrum on the ship, you receive another communication. As I'm, like, grabbing the edge of my seats going, oh, please, God, I need to hear something. <laughs> it comes in. This is Dollarum. We located the individuals. They look like they've been held against their will. Going to set up transport pattern soon. <clears throat> We're at the transporter bay, ready. Don't forget the cargo bay is going to be used as well. It's just going to be a little tricky with matter and organic beans. Uh, I have somebody there. We'll get as many out as we can. <laughs> and, yeah, right. I'm going to get this door open, and then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hunker here, and I'm going to keep my eye on this doorway. I think that's the only door I see so far. Uh, yes, there is only the there's only the one entrance from here. This far wall just pretend it extends another several hundred meters okay yeah nerds get to work <laughs> yep uh yeah neo's gonna take the lead. uh take the lead and mm -hmm. i'm assuming i have to hack something in order to get these jail cells open there's yeah. a computer right there there's a computer right there yes all right <clears throat> let's get to work okay okay this is where your computer expertise is going to shine a bit so yeah I'm going to step down here, so we're mm -hmm. covering. Yeah, because... You... Yeah, Eric, uh, yeah, Kel's going to... She's basically going to take a position somewhere near De Deimos in cover and uh, basically bar standard marksmanship, standard yeah. designated marksman position. Yep. Naturally, the you know, because there are still two guys up there. So, yeah, time is kind of of the essence. Uh, so... Naya, if you could roll me a daring plus security, please, for hacking, and your device will give you an advantage. 
Uh, yeah. So that's going to lower the d difficulty. Uh, so it's going to be difficulty two. And if someone wants okay. to assist, they are more than welcome to do so. Um, I will take a momentum for a third die. Okay. And firewalls is a focus here? I would say so, yes. All right. And is Midas assisting again? Yep, Midas can assist. So that's two successes from Naya. Excellent. And it was daring... Um, daring so security. Was daring security? Yep. And computers are a focus. Computers are indeed a focus. Cool. So that's one momentum from you guys. So this system is proving extremely easy to hack. Um, <clears throat> what you find interesting about that is, you know, there should be redundancies and um, uh, there should be, you know, several redundant systems, layers of encryption. Heck, there's not even a biometric scanner here to ensure that the operator is a Jin Sewell. Um, what, you, hmm. what you find so, most interesting is that um, the techno that how the command or the command to open the cells or close the cells is actually like legitimately hard coded the word please and thank you as well as several other um, phrases of worship. Huh. So not only are they fanatics, they're idiot fanatics. Oh, I mean, I like the, I like the term simple. If Kyle's saying that out loud, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I, no, I, not not saying that out loud. That's just a color commentary <laughs> from the player. Entirely um, possible. Or maybe go there's look a. Back to Kiel and go like get the transport hair set up now. And he's gonna pat his back. Uh huh. Uh, right. We... She'll uh, so. she'll grab the enhancers and uh, set set them up physically at least. Mm -hmm. Uh. So just quickly mark on the uh map where the enhancers are going to go. Uh. The the enhancers can create a square a 4x4 four four area for beam out. So just point me where the actual area is going to be because that may or may not become tactically important. Hmm. It's away from the door. It's hidden. Yeah. Gives us more times to get him out. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I, and I got clear line set of this door, so if anything does pop in there, I can shoot from either side, so... Yeah. Speaking of which... That sounds that sound like a good spot? Like that look like a good spot? I uh, no, back here. We're pinging. Probably, like, more like here, I would think. Okay, like that? Uh, are you not seeing the pings? I... I, I don't... I... Oh. I, I was seeing the pings, ah. but well, hey, if that's where you want to set them up, well, that's cool. I, I, I wasn't. Oh. I, right. I I don't have the full map in view. I, I ah. zoomed in a little bit. Where where were you pinging? Let me zoom out. There. Ah. Yeah. Okay. There we go. And then I was going to have them come down this way. Now, um, I need to add one more of these guys because they are coming down the stairs behind you. I'll just hey, yeah, I, for the moment. so yeah, I take take a little bit of time to get there, to get that set up, and then I would uh, quick rush back to sniping okay. position. Okay, so you are, so you're going to, I'm going to say that that's your first turn action is the setting up of things. Um, so, but I will be nice and let another Starfleet person go first, as these Jinsul are scuttering down the stairs. Uh, I want to try and get, because uh, he's no longer here, lock Ila to just get into safety, or if he can, just be in a safe location. Okay. Oh, he dropped out. Where'd he? Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. get going. Ah, it's a shame. Okay. So, Lakila has taken his turn. So, Lakila is there. Damos, can you get a uh, force field up there? Uh, 
I don't know the quantity. I thought we said two, but I, I, just for now, I'm just going to say we have one on him. Yeah. Okay, so Jinsul Enforcer is going to come down and take a shot at Rafiti. <laughs> the one who only has five. <laughs> yes, this will be fun. Um, I mean, fun for me. Maybe not for you. I wonder if my sheet works yet. Let's find out. Double 20s. Come on, double 20s. I was going to say double 20s. And that's a big no. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> that's oh, still no. a major miss. Holy moly. He tr he's In his zeal to punish the heretics, he stumbles slightly. One of his uh, multiple legs stumbles on one of the stairs as he, and causes the shot to go wide. I'm going to aim and fire. Okay. Unless somebody else has something else that they want to do. Well, go ahead. Has he been hit before? No, this guy has not been hit yet. Drop him, drop him like a bag of potatoes. Just yeah, I would like to. Um, I, is anybody opposed to momentum for a third die? Nope, go ahead. Not at go all. for go it. Go for it. <clears throat> okay, that is a hit and one momentum back. Woo. And it's four plus security? Yep. Big money, no whammies. That's a lot of whammies. That's a lot of, yeah, so. You can, you uh, can use momentum to reroll momentum the, re the zeros. Now, hang on. You did use aim. Now, or was that in your. Yeah, I'm using the type three. So yeah. aim. Uh, let's see. What was Aim it? just lets him reroll the challenge, not the challenge dice, oh. the. Uh... D20s. Okay, never mind. So, spending a momentum reroll. Okay, that is significant. Has Rafiti been given anything for his activation this uh, session? Yeah, I gave him quick to action. Okay. Oh, really? <laughs> mm-hmm. Cool. Okay. Well, this is our first round of action in this round. It is. Okay, um, so that does take some, and even after factoring in the resistance, that is enough to cause an injury. He's now blocking the entrance. Ooh, and yes, he is. Okay. Uh, sorry, what were you saying, Shizno? Am I able to see both of them? You're not. Okay, so this is like a hard wall then. Correct. Okay. Okay, yeah, so he is suffered an injury. Um, I'm, unless you have another option, I'm going to say that you're, you aim for one of the arms that, or one of the manipulators that supports the phaser. And causes mm -hmm. him, or not phaser, his rifle, and causes him some significant pain there. Cool. Okay. Um, <clears throat> next up would be the Illuminator, who is only able to get as far as the Jinsul Enforcer before coming to a dead halt. Um, he does... Uh, he does ask the... He... Yeah, because you are all now understanding their speech, he asks the Radiance for the uh, for their assistance in preventing the heretics from leaving. For oh, and okay. in I will see how well that works. That is a crit success. So. <clears throat> Uh, several of the force fields begin to blink back to life. Uh, um, is it my turn? Can I go? It, would you like to? Sure. I would. I'm going to walk over here. And as I heard him ask for the radiance, I'm going to give you three threat, JM. Okay. And I'm going to activate my light bear talent. Okay. Burn bright like, burn bright like a solar flare. Uh, which does... I gained Vicious 1. Okay. So, Demos literally is just... Looks like he's glowing. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to fire at... I'm going to peek in and if I can see him. Can I see him? It's going to be a difficult shot, but yes. Uh, that's okay. Um, daring and security? Uh, control security. Uh, this is now going to be difficulty 3. Oh, control just, security? Uh, 
Uh, control security for a ranged attack, yes. Okay. Uh, difficulty um, three, because he is un in cover. I'm using my determination, because like, before okay. I'll use my... Um, uh, milestone. The, the milestone. Yeah. So two successes right there. Mm-hmm. And... What happened? Huh. Well, that's three that's successes, three. so that's what you need. And I'm going to... Hmm. Yeah, I'll just leave that there. Okay. Okay. And nine. Nine. I'm going to... Uh, it's only two. So that's nine damage total, yeah. Uh, with Vicious, well, yeah. Um, you guys want me to reroll those two zeros? They could be two more effects. Or I can use yeah. it for a piercing. Uh, I way, think I think piercing is probably a safer option here. And I will use the momentum for piercing. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so um, because he's already asked the Radiance for assistance for his round and they did something else, he doesn't get his shield. So that blasts through him. And that is nine total damage. Piercing of that. Yeah. Um, he's injured badly, but he is still up. So. Uh, do they, uh, do, do they act differently now that I'm a, a glowing super saiyan, as it were? <laughs> um, you hear, uh, the illuminator begins cackling about a false candle, uh, attempting to, uh, outshine their holy mission, but blown out just as quickly. And that's my fill with holes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's also knocked down. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Um, because you gave me threat, I'm going to spend that threat, and he doesn't get knocked down. Okay. That, that was kind of the play I was hoping you'd go with. with yeah. threat kind of. Okay, so let's see. That was your turn. And so they've already done their turn, so everyone else can now continue the uh, gang beat, which I believe is Nia and Kiel. Okay. Um... Start yelling, evacuate, put in the way. <laughs> That's probably what Neo's going to start handling, yeah. Okay. So he's just going to move around like here-ish. Oh, hey, he did oh. say some of the force fields went back yeah. up. Some of the force fields did oh, go back true. up. I mean, hacking's his thing, so I'll roll with it. So, um, because he is a, well, I'll, I'll take Lakila's next action when it's, you know, he can do stuff because he might have an idea. But yes, um, so your system, as far as your system is concerned, the force fields are down. Okay. The fact that they're up is a little Ooh. baffling. Huh. Interesting. Uh, Ten Commander, it says the force fields are down. Okay, try and cut power to this whole room, I guess. Maybe it actually is divine intervention, but he's going to try anyway. Okay, because, you know, what else has been given by trying to outdo God's will? I mean, he's already outdone this This race is God's will by shutting down the sun-sucking weapon, so we're going to try. Yep. So, probably what? Daring engineering? Yeah, daring engineering, difficulty of... You're just trying for this room, so it's going to be difficulty of three. Okay. And that's already uh, taking your hacking a tool into account. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Midas uh, could assist if Midas wants to. Yeah, he'll assist. I'll take <laughs> moment, our last momentum for a third die, just to be safe. Okay, yeah, that's three up. success. That's good. And Darren Engineering as well for Midas. Mm hmm. Okay, you get that one momentum right back. So, power is shut down. The lights go out. The force fields are still up. 
However, only about only about 50% of them turned on, and those ones are still on. Actually, can... hang on, oh, no. Sorry, go ahead. No, sorry, I'm just remembering how this technology works. Uh, no, those ones do go down. So yeah, Huzzah! you have successfully uh, turned them off. And then you yell, out of the cells! <laughs> uh, they are more than willing to... Yeah, and then he'll use his minor action to move over here and start, like, directing people. Okay. Uh, there is, um, so there's the chaos Technology of Technology the... is the real god! And uh, he runs. <laughs> um, so there is several shouts, and everyone begins a bit of a mob, when all of a sudden a very powerful voice booms from further on down. You are Starfleet officers. I expect you to follow those orders. Move orderly. Those who can assist, do. Those who cannot assist, move. And I assume we can easily recognize this voice as Captain Worf. That would be Captain Worf, yes. Um, you, you just hear d was going, I think I'm in love. Ah, <laughs> uh, broke man cr or bot crush? Uh, okay, so, um, sorry, I think it's Keel's turn. Yes, um, uh, she'll uh, move into a. Uh, she can she shoot from her, uh, uh, shoot the enforcer from her current position. I'm afraid not. The only way for line of sight would be with, uh, within the security office or just in front of the door, or just in front of the okay, staircase. Okay, she'll, yeah, she'll move to the security office uh, just inside the door, prime mm -hmm. sniping position. Yep. And... and then she will uh, shoot. Okay. Uh, so because he's injured and once again prone, you get the choice. You can either uh, roll an extra deed. It'll be difficulty one, or uh, you can do... Um, I'll let you roll one more challenge dice. D diff one. Okay. And uh, <laughs> threat for an extra d20 because... All the extra momentum I can get for the actual damage roll. Okay. That's three. Okay. That is three degree success, so two momentum. <clears throat> oh. Yep. And, uh... Going to okay, so a challenge up. Wow. Ooh. Yeah. Um, uh, because you do yeah. non-lethal damage, it's impossible for them to um actually kill. But yeah, he slumps and his just because I think it's funny, his body is going to tumble forward down the rest of the stairs and Demos, I need you to make a daring daring fitness test please. Is he going to trap us in the hall? In the uh, daring fitness or daring security or security fitness? Uh, I'm sorry. Late night. Um, fitness security please. With a difficulty of one. And if you have acrobatics or you know something that allows for good reaction <laughs> speed, now would be a good time. Krav Maga. <laughs> yeah, I will let Krav Maga work in this instance. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, okay, so you get one momentum from that. Uh, so the unconscious body topples and rolls unpredictably down the flight of stairs. And it would have pinned you if it weren't for your fast reflexes and ability to deflect it. Um, the only problem is anyone trying to move out of the security office will have to spend their full action to do so. Ah. So, this one is fully unconscious now and is out of the turn. Okay, so, round two. Uh, so, unless someone... Does someone wish to do quick to action? And keep I initiative? I quick to action. I mean... Uh... Uh, I mean, we might as well. Yeah, let uh, Lakila go. Let's quick back to take everyone else is gone. Uh, Lakila went early. Lakila's action went first because to get him into safety. Okay. Yeah. Um, so he's already went. 
can Lakila go over and activate so we can start transporting? Sure. Would that be his action? That would be a good action for him to take. Uh, along the way, he asks for, um, if possible, try to salvage some of their weapon technology. It might be interesting to study. Yes. <clears throat> I will say yes and lie to him. Anyway, okay, so. Uh, so that was Lakila's first turn. Next up is the Illuminator. Who is going to move down here. And is going to raise his pistol and once again try to shoot at Demos. I'm going to spend some... cover from the body? Yes, you do. I'm going to spend yeah. <laughs> some threat for an extra dice. And that is... Two successes. Two successes to hit. Does cover add resistance, or does it make the difficulty harder? Uh, let's find out. Cover. It's because of the demos. I say it adds to whatever makes it a fail. <laughs> of course you would. Uh, let's see. Effect rolled on covered dice. Oh, I see. Oh, right. Cover is unopposed. So we roll. So cover actually rolls challenge dice. I remember now. So, okay. Demos, could you roll me two challenge dice, please? Sure. Okay. Uh, so it does not provide any cover in this instance. Can I use momentum to re-roll? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, you probably you'd be allowed if you want to, but we have four. Yes, but how many are we going to need to activate transporters? That is a that good question. That is also true. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Um, let's let's see what happens. Uh, let's. How much damage? I mean, I'm planning on two? busting Dolrum's uh, determination, and he it has a three in engineering, so he can assist with. Getting the ship. Started. Ignore that button. Ignore that. That was. We almost blew that thing up. Yes, you did. It would have been hilarious had you done so. Uh, okay. So. <laughs> Ooh, that's decent. Uh, what were the effects on this weapon? Ah, that's all he had with that, and he didn't use that action. So that's only five points of damage to Demos. Uh, two moment to avoid injury. Yeah. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> Dull run authorizes that spend of momentum. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, that's the only Jin Sul in, so everyone else can do their thing. Okay. I'm gonna um... fire at him just because he's right there. Okay. Okay. You of all people would have the ability to hit hardest. So, command security. Uh, uh, control yep. security. Uh, control security. Control, yep. Yeah. Sorry. I'm Difficulty two. two. Um. You guys okay Can... with momentum? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So one momentum back. Eh. Seven damage. Uh, one Do you more... want to reroll? Yeah, one more for the reroll. Okay. Okay, so okay. that's Ten. all the vicious one. Oof. Oh god. So that's... sixteen. So that's sixteen no. damage. Well that's just that's just um, gross. He, his chronotons vaporize himself. Yeah, so he calls the radiance to once again assist him or protect him from these vagrants. And these trespassers and these heretics, as lightning just arcs across his body, uh, he sort of somehow spontaneously hovers in the air while all six of his appended his uh, legs jut straight out sideways. The whole thing twitches, collapses to the floor in a smoking heap. Uh, those of you who have working noses are horrendously offended by the smell. He was just laughing, just like he, he achieved maglev. Oh, I hurt. <clears throat> okay, uh, yeah, so that's combat. And now yeah. we are... So we're going to... 
Uh, we're already past 10 o'clock. So I'm all re I had a nice extended task with complications figured out, but we are already running a little over time. So the trans so we're going to cut to the uh, lunette. Um, so uh, D Commander Dalrum, um, roughly 10 minutes ago, the sun sucking beam ran out or stopped running. And, but it came, it was reactivated again about, you know, five minutes after that. And it's about this time that you receive another call from Demos. This is Dol Initiate beam out. We got some casualties and wounded. Sick bay is on standby. Both transporters are operational. We will begin beam out immediately. Wrap the engineering bay for me. <laughs> Noted. <clears throat> okay, so um, the beaming out is going fairly well. Uh, it may have something to do with the fact that Lieutenant, or sorry, Captain Worf, he's no longer Lieutenant, is basically bellowing and forcing people that need uh, medical attention through first. You are. Uh, you receive a lot of friendly greetings from those whom you pass. Uh, you definitely recognize the Starfleet um, uniforms. Many have been worn away or soaked through with sweat, blood, or other body fluids. Many are, are haggard. Um, the crew complement of the Enterprise E, I believe, was roughly 700. Yeah, 750. But there is only 150-ish life uh, prisoners. Not all of which are Starfleet. There are several races that you don't recognize. Uh, most of which are humanoid. Some of which are insectoid. But mostly humanoid. Uh, okay. Yep, sorry. We're packing tight. <laughs> I'm just going to say, uh, yeah. keep it moving. We are packing tight in here. I grab the rifle and the pistol. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Uh, please make note of that. I'll make note too. And between the two of us, we should remember what you discover come season two if you encounter these guys again. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Yeah. I mean, I found ship models and everything. Yeah. Ah. Um, while we're transporting, I want to try something with Nia, if I may. Of would course. I ha Would I know that the sun death beam thing came back on? Uh, yeah. Down here, you probably would not have. Um, there's no uh, religious worshipping of the sunbeam as there would have been upstairs. Hmm. And okay. you've, you've also cut power to this area, so... I mean, once everybody's accounted for it, he'll probably turn power back on to this room. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so the... Power, once power is restored, the force fields are actually off. Um, or what? I'm sorry. The force fields of the that that were that had sprung to life stay off. Um, okay. Lakila quickly uh, does a quick scan of some of the force fields, um, and says that it was interesting how the force fields that were on seem to have these chroniton clusters around them. Uh, he has a he has a thought, um, and asks Nia Nia for, for his uh, phaser since his has been repurposed. And he'll gladly hand his over. Mm -hmm. uh, few uh, cutting scenes later, and he has salvaged part of a force field emitter. Hmm. All right, let let's evacuate everyone yeah. and get back to the ship as quickly as we can because. They're not firing now. They're going to start firing soon. Yes, indeed. And yeah. in proper dramatic timing, um, so things that you should or might want to be aware of is Commander Worf or Captain Worf is missing an arm. Uh, Jordy LaForge is right out of it mentally. Um, he begins mumbling about how the light has been stolen from him, how they took his... how they took his... Uh, 
his best friend away from him and how he wants to speak to Data again one more time. You know, that sort of mumblings. It's not a unique effect. It's not a unique thing either. Many of these individual, many of these primarily humans and other species that are not martial, tr martially trained, are showing uh, signs of severe post-torture or post-traumatic stress syndrome. Counselors are going to be busy. Uh, the whole beam out, ah, sorry, the whole beam out process takes about 10 minutes, and just as a fresh brew group of Jinsul begin uh, clattering down the stairs, they sound like they're wearing heavier armor this time. The last of you are ready to beam out. Is there anything you wish to do before you wave goodbye? I take the rifle and overload it and chuck it down the hall as I'm the last one to beam out. Hmm. The rifle does not respond to your command. There is zero power in it. Mm. Uh, if there's no power, then I'd, I wouldn't chuck it. Okay, you'll keep it? Cool. Yeah. Very well. The... Uh, as the uh, sparkles of dematerialization de de wash over you, uh, several white uh, lightning arcs zap around you uh, harmlessly. And you find yourselves back on the... Uh, back on the transporter room of the USS Lunette. Oh, hey, Galen. Hey, Galen. Oh. Bye, Galen. <laughs> uh, would, yeah. would Commander Dolrum like to meet you? Or is what what is Commander Dolrum doing, I should ask, is the better question. I was probably helping coordinate transporta transports, but as they said they were the last ones, I'd probably run up to the bridge so that we can, uh, like, GTFO. Okay. Like, as soon as they are, we get a confirmed safe transport, we're GTFO. And I'll probably have somebody who didn't go over in the slip near, so it's following us. That, yep, yeah, wise idea, bringing the slip near. You can cram another 20 people into that thing. Mm hmm. Okay, uh, Demos, you're the commander of the away mission. Do you wish to let the captain know? Uh, I, I, as I get on a transport, I look at my ripped up and lightning shocked uniform. I'm like, I'm not dead yet. I'm on Midas. I'm just going to grab him and walk up to the bridge. As okay. soon as we got uh, info that they were safe on board and no other people were left, we would be turning and going. That would be wise. It's um, Just for the sake of thematics, for the last three minutes, uh, you have been dodging very clumsy weapons fire from this ship. Uh, the ship is obviously not designed to deal with smaller targets such as yourself. And Henry, or... and. Uh, Ensign Mud has done a very good job of keeping you well away from their um, energy weapons at the same time as, you know, risking shields dropping for each transport. Mud, get us out of here. Hi, sir. Going home. Push the engines. Yes, sir. <clears throat> uh, Captain Dolorum. Damn us, you're a little worse for wear. <laughs> uh, I only feel as bad as I look. I look like shit. You are, look alive. That's all I care about. We can fix the other part. Uh, it's going to be hard. The alloy I'm composed of is hard to replicate in here. Well, luckily we'll be back in a few hours. Well, bad news, though. Uh, confrontation became lethal. Again, sometimes rules are meant to be broken. I tried to talk with them. They shot first. Then as far as I'm concerned, you did... We're doing your duty exactly as how you were trained. And when the shots were fired, it turned into protecting your crew. Yeah, still don't feel good taking a life, but now I see it. Uh, and to quote uh, Spock, um, the needs of the many outweigh the, or the needs of the few. The what the, the, the I just 
Screwed up. Fuck. <laughs> That's okay. You get a slow clap from Demos. <laughs> Like, I, it's been a long day. It has. Let's get I, it out of here. It's basically a pity clap. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Good you, David. <laughs> You've got my point. Let's go home. The get a bigger ship. Uh, as you it jump to warp, the turbolift doors open up, and out spot out stops ah, out steps Captain Worf. I'll stand and turn. Captain on the bridge. I ain't standing. He makes a mo- he makes a motion with his uh, good arm to sit down. Commander, thank you very much for rescuing my- myself and my crew, as well as those others that have been persecuted by the Jinsul. You can thank your pal Will Riker. He snorts. <laughs> what is that Patak up to these days? It has been ages since I've seen him. Well, we now call him Admiral. Uh, he intercepted um, on s- some sort of communication device that Jordy had. Uh, it came through, and we were able to pin it to this area. And since we've now built a station next to the Transwarp Hub, he actually sent an old friend of all of you out to give us the information. He nods solemnly. LaForge has suffered much. However, when it came through, he was able to do what he was able to perform one final task. Well, we hope that it's not irreversible. Agreed. A station, you say? I look forward to seeing it. We're about four hours out at maximum warp. Splendid. Commander, if you don't mind, I wish to take a position on your on the bridge it has been what is this what is the star date the star date is as i forgot my notes (laughs) eight two six four eight point zero it runs a bit of a mental calculator it's been seven years since i have set foot on a bridge i am not i've lost my bridge i wish to See another in action before I head to head back to Starfleet for an aft for an for court martial. I have failed in my duties. I step aside and motion to take the captain's chair. Sir, you have failed in nothing. The Enterprise was considered lost. As far as concerned, you kept it going. You didn't fail, you succeeded. That's your chair, Commander. He and, he sit, and he sits over by one of the auxiliary consoles. I shall take auxiliary tactical. That's, that's actually auxiliary science. That goes back over here. Is, the layout got changed. Oh, used to the old Defiant class. Very well. Thank you. Yeah. You want to fire the phases? I'll toss up a simulation for you. No. Enough enough has been done. I just wish to observe. As you wish, Captain. So, the... We're going to cut back to the... Uh, We're going to cut back to the station itself. Five hours later. Yeah. Uh, Captain Crawford. Yes. You have returned from your diplomatic mission to the Vitars, where they have uh, successfully uh, reintegrated the planet of Ix into their Imperium. It has been uh, thoroughly... Um, um, I hate to use the word purge, because it wasn't a purge. It has um, The Togelau infestation has been cleared. Cleansed. Uh, not cleansed. Yeah. The Togelau left willingly Thank and you. freely. And uh, so you you and Paul were wearing your uh, dress uniforms during a fairly la- gaudy ceremony. And you have returned to find um, Elena um, Proxima ready to perform her concert. However, she does wish for a safe return of the <clears throat> of the USS Lunette before doing so. Uh, she also identifies herself act in private as Lal and gives you the same mission briefing that she gave the crew of the 
uh, Commander Dalrum and the other senior staff that hmm. launched them on this journey from not even a day so not even a day ago. Ginger, her um, tour manager and bodyguard, is rather grouchy with this because she had timed this down to the she had timed this whole tour down to the minute, and you're already way over schedule. Um, Alana or Elena Proxima says, "Tough beans, sister." <laughs> Ginger sort of smiles. Wouldn't be surprised if they're actually sisters, given that they're both androids. Well, um, it's a shame that neither will actually let Larsa have a look at their insides. Oh God, phrasing. Um, okay. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so, Commander Crawford, you're back on the bridge um, oh, after finding... Captain, sir. <laughs> sorry, who did, what did I call you? Ed? Commander. I'm... You've been calling me Captain. <laughs> I'm sorry. Captain Crawford, you are on ops when with uh, Lieutenant Commander Keevan. And Keevan says that the USS Lunette is returning. There are a significant number of life signs on board. As soon as we could get a transmission, we would be transmitting through going, uh, evacuation capacity, ready all medical bays. I'm already sending those orders down. <clears throat> okay. Uh, get someone in robotics bay as well, please. Robotics. <laughs> we also need robotics, Captain. Sending people down there already. Lunette has returned. <clears throat> All right. So, let's. It's a shame that uh, ELH had to drop out for the night, but uh, Commander Area it has sick bay or has the infirmary running at max capacity. Anyone with any sort of tr triage medicine has been called in to assist. Um, this includes several security personnel who have battle battlefield trauma, etc. Uh, likewise, um, Demos is going to be in the robotics bay, where uh, who... Uh, Midas and Demos. Uh, Midas and... Yeah, no, Demos and Midas. Midas is actually going to be working on his repairs. Okay. Because that's his focus. That is his focus. Does anyone wish to assist Midas in repairing Demos? Uh, Larsa can. I, I do okay. want to do another... Uh, uh, one final suit roll for the season once okay. everything is done, but I can help with sure the repairs thing. at least. Um, I had it in here somewhere. Seven. It was synthetics. Okay. Yamato is here. Usha is not. And there is a Demos and a Midas. Uh, right. Demos, you are looking a little worse for wear. His, his uh, little lights in his face are kind of flickering on and off. Okay. Well, you're certainly looking a lot worse for wear. It sh shouldn't be too hard to patch you up, though. Oh, you know how to repair uh, graphene uh, carbon fiber filaments? Well, may maybe not... I, I might not know right away, but I can learn. I'm just kidding. That stuff doesn't exist in this universe. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Midas buzzes and zips around. Yes, we have been trying for three years to find a suitable sub substitute. Alas, we have yet to find a suitable substitute. Um, so, who wants to take the lead? Does Midas want to take the lead and Larsa assist, or vice versa? This what is going... It's engineering yeah. instead of medicine. Yeah. So what's the other part? Uh, control plus. I'd say control engineering in this instance. Uh, okay. Because I you have time five. and you're not, you know, having to do this under fire. Yeah. Um, five engineering, eleven control. Oh yeah, Maya's gonna assist them because okay. uh, he only has a thirteen and. Yep. Yeah. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty okay. of three to get Demos up and running. Uh, difficulty five to actually properly repair him. Just like you said, the, this the stuff that you're used to having does not exist. Yeah. Okay, control and control engineering. Hmm. 
Part of me wants to just burn, just burn six threat. <laughs> Go for the full five. I don't know if I'd give it to you now that this base, I don't have anything left to spend it on. Right. You do have your uh, determination, I believe. Yeah, I think I might save that for the suit roll. Okay. Um, hmm. Now you know where you yeah. are in priorities there, Demos. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, uh, hey, hey. Well, um, hmm. you know, I'll spend one momentum for a third. Okay. <clears throat> the way the dice have been rolling, could roll hot. Uh, this will be yeah. my second time using Midas. Can mm -hmm. I activate him as a value? Uh, yes. I, Yeah, we can give Midas a value. I think we're going to... I'm going to come up with more uh, stringent guidelines for Midas, just because I'm not ecstatic of you having a support character ex that exists specifically just hmm. to support you. But, yeah, we'll figure that out during break. May okay. hmm. Maybe there, maybe there could be. Hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if there's going to be some scanning going on. Could my exo tricorder work with this? I would say yes. Your exo tricorder could give you an advantage, so I will lower the difficulty to four. Okay. And let's see. Um. I doubt experimental technology would work for a focus. Not in this instance. Uh. For this, even if I'm assisting, could I burn the determination to get two successes for the check? No, not for the assistance, I'm afraid. Okay. Alright, so control engineering. Yep. Okay, One. so that's... Th okay. Uh, Demos, you are brought up to uh, functioning standard. Um, however, parts of you will need significant amounts of you know, fixing properly to restore your exo frame. But that can be tackled during season break while we, yeah. while uh, Yamato learns more about you. And while you're here, Yamato, feel free to roll a suit roll. What are you looking to get out of this? Um, I think at this time we're going to do armor. Uh, okay. Impro improving, improving the armor. Okay. So pretty uh, similar to what we've done prior. So this will be uh, control engineering. Difficulty four. And if Midas happens to be around and wants to assist, you know, okay. And uh, I'll use determination with the <laughs> value. Technological progress does not stop to ask. What's the yep. worst that could happen? That works for me. Experimental technology is a focus. So uh, con control engineering. Uh, yep, control engineering. Or would that be insight in this? Nah, control engineering works. A difficulty four. Okay, I've already got two successes. Mm -hmm. And no spending threat to get any more mm -mm. dice. So here we, here we go. <laughs> Experimental technology focus. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's a complication. I... Interesting. We okay. Got three and a complication. All right. What can Midas do here? Midas oh, to the Midas rescue. <coughs> Midas is. Or is Midas care? Demos. Oh, Midas doesn't care. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Demos is his lifeline. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Uh, yeah. So there, you're not just. So you've learned some very interesting things from uh, working with Demos's uh, exoskeleton that you think could work here. However, the materials just aren't meshing with the suit structure right now. Uh, okay, it's going to so... take some significant amount of work to get it to work yeah. the way you want. So, okay. okay, so no no development just yet, but uh, definitely so, some progress uh, towards the next step. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, final scene that I currently have planned is going to be in the captain's office. Captain Crawford, you are in your office, where the expected chime on the door occurs. Enter. Uh, whoops. He is in the wrong layer. Let's rectify that immediately. Uh, Captain Worf comes in. Um, uh, there... As soon as he enters, he immediately like stands at rigid attention. There is no need for that. 
You are captain of this station. I am merely a guest, currently without command. Please. It'll kind of like blink like, oh, okay. And then he just kind of awkwardly sits down. <laughs> I'm quite impressed with this facility. Starfleet has come a long way in a, in a short period of time. I'm... I wish to extend the thanks of my for myself and my surviving crew for you and yours for bringing for rescuing us and providing us safety during what well, preventing a most gruesome fate for people like you captain and the crew of the enterprise it it was nothing to do what we can to help you and I'm glad we were able to get get you back it's not long until uh, Lal shows up behind her and she, as soon as uh, she uh, your door chimes again and Lal steps forward without even waiting for the entrance and she immediately hugs Worf it has been too long have you been practicing? <laughs> well, I'll just go. Oh, Captain, I am pers I am proficient. I am proficient in over th 373 forms of musical instruments, 27 vocal stylings, and 42 dance routines. Currently working on the next 12. Yes, I have been practicing. Good. Lal turns to the captain and bows. Captain, thank you very much. I would... Uh, a favor, if you don't mind. Anything. Captain, I would like to give my first performance to the rescued crew of the Enterprise. Your station, of course, will... Rec you, you and your crew will... You and the station will be able to attend a second concert. Of course. And she bows. Thank you. I shall ensure that things are set up appropriately. Ginger's not going to like this. I don't care. And she smirks. She's on my station, so <laughs> I'm the one in charge. And once again, she bows again to you, gives Worf a, another long hug, and steps outside, back to Ops, and heads outside. Heads back down to the Arboretum. Captain, I wish a tour of your station. The last station I served on was Cardassian Junk. I would appreciate seeing a new state-of-the-art facility. Uh, of course, but if Deep Space Nine was still quite the station. Uh, my grandfather served there briefly, but not long before it was... Fortunately, destroyed. Yeah. Indeed. I. Uh, it was more of a nostalgic. It was. It was a fine station, primarily because of the, of her crew, as well. You know. Indeed, I do. Uh, uh, please, Captain, if you'll follow me, I'll give you the tour myself. Ah. Uh, one second, please, and he'll step up to the replicator. Computer. One large thermos of prune juice. <laughs> and he takes a long <laughs> swig of it before following uh, Captain Crawford out. And with that ends the season, folks. So I hope you have all had a fun time. And uh, I have. Excellent. Oh, yeah. I thank every one of you for playing and for playing with me for this long. Uh, everyone on YouTube and Twitch for watching in. And on behalf of myself, my players, um, I th we will be taking a session break, so we will not be here on the 4th, and we will be resuming October 18th. Same time, same channel. Until then, talk to you later. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. Later, Bye. stream!